Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, thank, you. thank you very much. Yeah. Mm. Hello? Yes. You can, do you want to try the screen? Uh, yes. Share a screen? Yes. Yes. Is it okay? Yes, that, that I can see perfectly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm so uh, sorry, it was not showing the screen. I'm certainly ready to start whenever you can. Are you, yeah. are you be, you're, you're, okay, so let me introduce you maybe in like uh, one minute. Let me just check. Yes, yeah, thank you. No problem, thank you. Okay. So maybe that that is a uh, start. Uh, okay, okay let, let me introduce. Uh, it is our great honor to have uh, Professor Yoshio uh, Kifukawa uh, from uh, Institute of Physics, University of Tokyo. And it's really, um, uh, it's very honor that uh, he actually accept to speak, even though right now in Japan, I suppose right now it's 11 p.m., 11.30 p.m. 11.30 p.m. Yeah, so very sorry for this, but the Professor Kikukawa still uh, kindly accept. So it's really great honor. Uh, so uh, Professor Kikukawa Yoshio Kyojo Oo Mukei Takita Ko Aditasu Kyojo O O Kainde Shimazu Arigato So please welcome, start. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Juben. Uh, First of all, I would like to thank Juben uh, for giving me this opportunity to present my work in the seminar at CMSA. Thank you very much. So today, I would like to discuss about gauge invariant path integral measure for the overlap lattice wire fermions in 16 dimensional irreducible representation of SO10. So this talk is based on these two works. Okay. As you know, the standard model is a chiral gauge theory. Quarks and leptons belong to complex representation of the gauge groups SU3, SU2, U1, okay, in this representation. And the gauge invariant, because this representation is complex, Gauge invariant 
premium bilinear terms are forbidden, but gauge anomalies are cancelled non-trivially in this model, in the standard model, and there is no global anomaly as shown by a flea uh, in, uh, in this year. Fermion number symmetry B and L is broken by chiral anomaly. GUT models of the standard model are also chiral. And in general, in chiral gauge theories, we expect various non perturbative effects, such as a realization, non trivial realization of gauge or flavor symmetries, and also generation of fermion number symmetry, etc. But in perturbation theory, we know that I, no gauge invariant regularization is known in perturbation theory, but we can construct local counter terms in each order of perturbation theory. For study non perturbative effect like this, like this, gauge invariant non perturbative formulation is desirable. In this respect, SO10 chiral gauge theory is a good target for this purpose by the following reasons. One generation of quarks and leptons belong to a single 16 dimensional irreducible spinal representation of SO10. It is defined by the gamma matrix of SO10, defined like this, and the generator is defined like this. And the 16 dimension, this representation, uh, reducible, and then 16 dimensional irreducible representation is obtained by the chiral projection with gamma 11. Okay. It is complex, but free from all gauge anomalies, both local and global. Because of the property of the uh, spinal representation of the generator, we have this relation, which means the gauge anomalies, perturbative gauge anomaly is cancelled. On the other hand, by the recent study, uh, these people show the, that the, there is no global anomaly in the SO10 chiral gauge series. And it is very nice result. Moreover, U1 fermion symmetry is broken by chiral anomaly, and there is no global symmetry and no Tofut anomaly to be concerned in this SO10 chiral gauge theory with a single 16 representation. And uh, this U1 symmetry breaking is given by the, the U1 premium symmetry is broken by uh, the Tofuto vertex, which is given by the four fermion operator defined by this way. Okay, here we have a uh, VA is a bilinear SO10 vector uh, operator, bilinear operator. And from this, we can form a, a SO10 invariant for fermion operator like this. And this gives the Tofuto vertex for the, to break the U1 fermion symmetry. And uh, we know that the, if we consider the SU2 instantons, then zero modes of this fermions are always multiple of co. The number of zero modes counts uh, multiple of co. So the product of this operator can saturate the zero mode and it gives rise to the Tofus vertex. Okay, so because of these properties, it is very, it is very, uh, it is a good target for the non perturbative construction of this chiral gate survey. Okay. So, in this talk, I'd like to discuss a construction of a certain chiral gate theory on the lattice using the so called overlap while fermions, which satisfies the Ginzburg Wilson relations. And uh, in the, the lattice uh, 
approach in the approach in this approach with overlap fermions so far u1 chiral gauge theory and the su2 times u1 glacial weinberg sala model has been constructed gauge invariant manner okay, by solving the so-called local cohomology problem and proving the global integrability but for generic non-Abelian chiral gauge theories, we do, we do not have any such constructions. Here, I would like to define or propose a manifestly gauge invariant pass integral measure for the overlap fermion in 16 representation of SO10. Okay, and that this definition, my proposal applies all possible topological sectors of gauge link field of SO10, and the CP invariance is maintained. And, but there remains the issue of locality or smoothness. And I like to discuss what is the issue. Once we have a SO10 chiral gauge cell on the lattice with overlap fermions, it is then easy to formulate a standard model by simply reducing the gauge group to SU3, SU2, U1. It is straightforward to add Yukawa interactions with Higgs field on the lattice. And that uh, this could give a satisfactory formulation of the standard model too. So I would like to discuss the SO10 case in this talk. I also discuss the relations of my approach or my proposal to other approaches or proposal. First, I discuss the relation to the Einstein Preskill model. Next, I would like to discuss the relation to Miller Ginzburg Wilson fermions model proposed or considered by Professor Popitz and his collaborators. And I also discussed the relation to the domain wall fermion formulation with boundary Einstein Presky term considered by Kreutz and his collaborators. But finally, I'd like to discuss the relation to the four dimensional topological, the formulation with formulation by the four dimensional topological insulator or topological superconductor with gapped boundary phases proposed by Professor Wen and Juven and Professor Wen. Okay. So this is a plan of my talk. In the first part, I would like to review that what is the overlap fermions. In the second part, I would like to discuss the gauge invariant formulation of pass integral measure for the overlap fermion in the 16 representation of SO10. I need to dis I discuss the saturation of the right-handed part of the measure by Tofuto vertices. And uh, I also discuss the locality issue, which is related to the gap boundary phase in the approach of the four-dimensional uh, topological insulator or superconductor. I also, then I would like to discuss the relations of my approach to other approaches and proposals in technical detail. Okay. So this is my plan. Okay. Okay. So let me go on. Uh, so, excuse me. Yes? I forgot to mention, so the audience certainly are welcome to ask questions, if any, yes. during the I think it should be okay. Yeah, and, it's okay. Okay, no problem. Yeah, it's okay. In, the end, in the end of the talk, if there are more questions, then people can raise their hands and then we can yes. prioritize people uh, in order. Yes. Thank you. Please go on. Yes. Okay, so lattice gauge theory is defined in the four dimensional. So uh, we, we, uh, uh, I'm going, I'm going to discuss about the uh, lattice gauge theory in four dimensions. So lattice gauge theory is defined on the four dimensional Euclidean lattice with the lattice spacing A, okay? And the matter field 
are defined on the sites and gauge fields are defined on the link. So as you can see, the matter sit on the site and the link gauge, link gauge, gauge field is defined as a link field to connect in, on the link. Okay. And the gauge transformation is defined on each lattice sites like this, which G belongs to the gauge group itself. And the link field, gauge transformation for the link field is defined by this formula. Then we can define the gauge covariant difference operator with the gauge link field like this. Then we can compute Then we can compute a commutator of the covariant difference operator to, to give the field strength of the gauge link field as a bracket variable. And the computation, if you compute the commutator of the covariant difference operator on the field psi x, then you get this factor, which is defined by the whole product of the link field along the minimal uh, area. So we, we defer this um, variable, bracket variable, and we can dig out this as a uh, field strength, a difference from this difference uh, of this quantity from unity can be regarded as a measure of the curvature. Okay, so we can dig out this, the field strength. Then we can define the gauge field action, gauge invariant manner, using this bracket variable. The path integral can be defined with the group invariant measure. Okay. Then the action and the measure preserve the gauge invariance exactly. And the continuum limit is defined near a second order critical point where the correlation length of the system goes to infinity, which, a physically, uh, which implies that the physical mass is uh, less, uh, is very small compared to the cutoff, which is given by the inverse of lattice spacing. Okay, and the universal, the universal scaling property at the second order phase transition gives a non perturbative prescription of the renormalization theory. Okay, so this, in this way, we can formulate gauge theory on the lattice preserving exact gauge invariance on the left in this way. Okay. Now let me discuss about the left lattice fermions. Fermion field on the left suffer from the species doubling problems. Okay, as you know where Wilson term, which is defined by this uh, second order uh, difference operator, removes the degeneracy of doublers but it breaks chiral symmetry, okay? And because of this term, the mass term, including of this bare mass, depend on the uh, momenta, and uh, it gives rise to a different mass for uh, the species doublers, okay? But since it has the same structure as mass term, it must break the chiral symmetry. And the Nielsen Ninomia theorem states that it is a general and inevitable result. If we consider the free lattice Dirac operator with a generic Dirac operator, D, and the Fitch tra Fourier transform is given by D children K, then these two conditions, physical, rather physical condition on D or D children, cannot be satisfied at the same time. The first Condition is D children K is a periodic and the analytic function of momentum K mu. The second condition is D children K looks like a Dirac operator, massless Dirac operator in the, con in the continuum limit, in the continuum limit for small momentum. Okay. And the third condition is D children is invertible for all K mu except K mu equals zero. So these, and then the fourth condition is a chiral invariance. Okay. And the first condition about uh, uh, these children 
is analytic function of momentum k mu implies that the lattice Dirac operator, lattice action defined with this Dirac operator is local with exponential decaying k. Okay. And that this is the, uh, so if we try to uh, formulate a lattice Dirac operator without species doubling, then chiral symmetry must be broken. And that, but, and that next, this problem can be solved if we consider the so-called Ginsburg-Wilson relation. And the Ginsburg-Wilson relation is a relation about a lattice Dirac operator given by this relation. In this case, I wrote this relation in terms of the inverse Dirac operator. And it means that fermion propagator, in the fermion propagator, chiral symmetry breaking is given by the local contact term. This Ginsburg-Wilson relation was originally obtained in the low energy effective lattice action at infrared fixed point of block spin transformation by Ginsburg and Wilson. Okay. And uh, later, Buscher showed that this relation, if D is local, we can define the chiral transformation in this way, including the lattice Dirac operator in this way, and for the, for the field psi. And for the anti-field psi, we use the, we define as usual. Then lattice action with this Dirac operator is invariant by this transformation. Okay. And as long as D is local, this chiral transformation makes sense as a local transformation. Okay. And uh, okay, so this is uh, the Ginzburg Wilson relation, and it means it uh, it can define when the chiral limit is achieved for lattice fermion, lattice fermions. And that this if this relation is satisfied chiral symmetry, exact chiral symmetry emerges in this way. And overlap Dirac operator is a local gauge covariant solution to the ginzburg wilson relation given by Neuberger. Okay. And the D, the overlap Dirac operator is defined in this expression with the wilson Dirac operator X. In this case, we include the negative large mass M0 here. Mass parameter M is uh, taken in the region of zero and two, in between zero and two. And in this case, so X is a Wilson Dirac operator with a negative mass of order inverse lattice spacing. Okay, and, in, and then with X, Dirac operator is defined <laughs> in this other complex uh, expressions. But in any way, in overlap Dirac operator is defined in this expression with x. Or here, the Wilson, dw is a Wilson Dirac operator or massless case. Okay. And that this Dirac operator is obtained as a low energy effective lattice action of five-dimensional domain wall fermion. And once we have a gauge covariant lattice Dirac operator, which satisfies the Ginzburg Wilson relation, and the exact chiral symmetry can be defined following Richard's proposal, then we can show that index theorem holds true on the lattice at a finite lattice spacing A. And we can also show that lattice fermion satisfies with this overlap Dirac operator satisfy reflection positivity, in the free case at least. Okay. So this is the overlap Dirac operator, definition of the overlap Dirac operator. So in this way, we can define a uh, massless fermion on the lattice with exact chiral symmetry in a consistent manner with Nielsen Yenomia theory. Once we have an overlap Dirac operator, we can also define the wild fermion. 
Yes. Excuse me. Here I have a yes. question in the last, on the last slide. Yes. Uh, I wonder whether this in the last slide, yeah, whether this is D operator required to be something permission or, or something. It's like usually in the uh, in the Euclidean space. Sorry, in the Minkowski space, the yes. Lagrangian has to be real uh, in order for the Hamiltonian to be a Hermitian. Yes. Whether some similar relation uh, for the D operator. So I'm worried about uh, whether this one may lead to the uh, non-unitary theory. Uh, whether yeah, yes. there's unitarity yes. condition they need to yes. satisfy. Yes, on, on the Dirac, uh, uh, as far as we consider the Dirac premium, for if we consider the Wilson Dirac operator like this, and then it has a, a complex conjugate relation using gamma five, like this. And in terms, okay. D is defined in terms of X, overlap Dirac operator itself satisfies a similar relation. Oh, this is a condition. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and the, and the, it follows that the determinant of the functional uh, determinant is real by this relation. Okay. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now let me define the wild fermions by the Ginzburg Wilson relations, and uh, the factor which was used in the chiral transformation actually. A square to unity, and then that we can have a we can define the another chiral operator gamma five hat, okay. and uh, using this gamma five hat and the uh, usual gamma five, we can define the chiral component or wild fermion degrees of freedom by this asymmetric condition. Okay. For field, we use the gamma five hat, which depend which is defined like this, using the overlap Dirac operator here. And uh, for anti-field, we use the usual definition. Okay. There is some ambiguity to define uh, chiral projection, but uh, I uh, use this convention. Then the lattice Dirac operator for the Dirac field is actually factorized to the left-handed part and the right-handed Completely. Okay. And so we can define the wild fermion field with a definite uh, chirality and the pitch and, and the action we can define like this. So, in this way, classically, we can define the wild fermion on the lattice if we have a lattice Dirac operator satisfying the Ginzburg Wilson relation. Okay, then what? how we can define the path integral measure for such a uh, wild fermion field. We can introduce the chiral basis and expand the wild fermion field which satisfy this constraint in terms of the chiral basis with some Grassmann value to coefficient. And uh, so we introduce the chiral basis by this relation for the field. And for the anti-field, we, we can define the chiral basis just like as usual, okay? As usual, okay? Then, then we can expand the original, uh, the wild field in terms of the basis and the anti-field in a similar manner. Then we can define the path integral measure uh, as a integration over this uh, Grassmann coefficient. CI and the CI bar. And the action, while fermion action, this part can be written uh, with can be written with these bases. And uh, here M is defined by the uh, uh, M is defined by the representation of lattice Dirac operator in this uh, chiral uh, in terms of chiral basis. Okay. Then the partition function is given by this path integral and it gives rise to a determinant of this representation matrix of the Dirac operator for the wild field. Okay. 
And in this way, the path integral gives rise to a chiral determinant, as this expression is known as vacuum overlap formula proposed by Narayana and Neuberger. Excuse me, and here's uh, a question. Yes. Yeah. yes. And uh, so we know that the determinant of the D operator is uh, real and non-zero, you just mentioned. And here you have a determ you, you construct M operator, M matrix, which is some kind of, some kind of projection to the, to the chi uh, chiral sector. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure the determinant of M matrix is also real and non-zero. Yeah. Except actually, to the point. yeah. Actually, this this determinant is in general a complex, and uh, oh, since okay. yeah, since this M I J is defined in terms of the gauge covariant Dirac operator okay. with chiral basis, and uh, there is a, a ambiguity to choose the chiral basis, okay. especially for V I. Okay. Okay. Then. The, by the unitary transformation, uh, which change the chiral uh, basis, this um, measure and also the chiral determinant change by the complex phase okay. of the unitary transformation, determinant of unitary transformation, I mean the Jacobian. Okay. So there is some ambiguity in the complex phase of okay. this chiral determinant. But it's actually, yes. yes. Okay. And that uh, this ambiguity is related to the gauge anomaly associated to this wide degrees of freedom. Since the chiral basis is defined with the gamma five hat here, and the gamma five hat depends on the Dirac operator, and the Dirac operator may depend on the gauge field. Because we uh, defined this Dirac operator with a gauge covariant difference operator in this expression. So D depend on the link field. Then the chiral basis can depend on the basis or unitary transformation of the chiral basis can depend on the gauge field with some ambiguity. And then the complex phase of the determinant has an ambiguity which may depend on the gauge field. And that this is related to the uh, gauge anomaly associated to this definition of wild fermion. Okay. So uh, if we try to formulate the gauge invariant chiral gauge theory in this formulation, the question is how to choose this basis, which may depend on the gauge field. We need to fix in some way the basis to define the measure, but uh, we need to be careful to preserve gauge invariance, for example. Okay. So in this way, um, this, um, so here is uh, the origin of the gauge. Uh, so, so it is the origin of the gauge anomaly. Okay. And that in fact, this determinant actually defined, ah, okay, let me discuss about, the, ah, okay, uh, let me discuss more about this um, phase ambiguity of this chiral determinant later. Okay. Okay. So, so, so in this way, I introduced the overlap Dirac operator and how to Excuse define. Me. Yes, uh, Professor Kikukawa, I think uh, yes? there one person has a question. Uh, Hank Chen, do you want to yes. ask yourself, or sh should I Hank ask for you? Yes, Hank. Uh, yes, yeah, I can ask. So my question is basically like you, you're imposing different uh, symmetry constraints under color yes. transformation for the yeah. different, uh, for, for the um, psi minus and psi bar minus. Yes. Yeah, so my, my question is like the color basis in which you expand these spinners, they're not like, they're not the same, right? When you take the bar of bar V yes. here. Yeah, they are not. not uh, they are not the same. Yeah, so so they're not like holomorphic anti-holomorphic pairs. So my question is, when you expand them, do you like the the coefficients shouldn't also satisfy that, right? So C bar yeah. bar is not yeah. C. 
Yes. So I'm just wondering, like, how did you compute the the the, the z here, the partition function? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, it, yes. Yeah. The partition function is defined by uh, is given by the determinant of this matrix m. Okay. This is very explicit matrix. Once you get the basis, okay. Right. So you compute fast. You need to compute fast the basis vector whole set of the basis vector. If you, if you want to compute this way, this expression. Right, right. Yeah. But, but C bar, but then, yeah. Yes. I'm and just uh, worried about the coefficients. Ah, coefficients. Yeah, yes, coefficients yes. is a rather uh, formally defined, uh -huh. introduced, and after, and I passing, so the coefficient is as a certain Grassmann variables. Right. Yes, and uh, and, and uh, by this expression, we fix the uh, uh, since original field uh, satisfying this constraint is also a Grassmann variable, mm -hmm. and uh, by this expansion, <clears throat> we fix the basis of the Grassmann variable, and then we can define the major mm -hmm. integration major. Okay, I guess and, yeah. Uh, after the integration, we mm -hmm. get uh, uh, this expression. So this is the usual integration over the Grassmann yeah. variable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I believe that, but only when CJ, this Grassmann value vector is the, um, yeah. it is conjugate to yeah. C. Yeah. yeah. But is so that the case way, here? Yes, C and the C, uh, mm -hmm. C, the set of CI and the set of CJ are independent set of Grassmann variables. Okay, in, we, since we are working in Euclidean space, okay. uh, okay. original Psi bar and Psi are also independent Grassmann variables right? <clears throat> in the usual uh, uh, formulation of mm -hmm. the Fermion pass integral. The same thing happens here. Okay. So, okay. Yes. And that, mind, that's a total number of a lattice site. Yes. A minus is a number of a lattice side. Ah, yeah, sorry. Ah, uh, yes. So let me explain this a little bit more. N minus plus N minus bar is uh, uh, the, na the whole degrees of freedom of lattice field on the fixed uh, for on a certain finite lattice. So okay. the volume times four times some Para degrees of freedom. Okay. Okay. But uh, since okay, but and uh, for the anti-field psi bar for v bar, the number of the basis is just the half of the total degrees of freedom for the okay. anti Dirac field. But for the field or basis vector v i, the number can depend on the gauge field, okay. especially on the topology mm -hmm. charge of gauge field, as I will explain <clears throat> later. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that's so like a zero mode. If, this, if M is rectangular, you have a zero mode, the determinant will be zero or something like that. Yes, yes. Okay. If that's this good. matrix becomes rectangular, then this determinant must vanish identically. And uh, this reproduces the situation Zero mode appears. Yes. I see. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. So let me uh, discuss. Uh, let me uh, several comments are order in this definition of overlap fermion or overlap wire fermion. So let me briefly explain several uh, properties of overlap Dirac operator or wire fermion. The first, first point is the locality of this overlap Dirac operator. Since it has this rather complicated expressions, and here we have an inverse uh, of square root of certain operator, then uh, there's, we need to be careful how Dirac operator behaves. Uh, okay. Then, if so, since we have uh, this factor, uh, we can show the following things. If this square of Hermitian Wilson Dirac operator, sorry, 
and that this HW is defined by D. Since we have a, this chiral co a conjugate relation with gamma 5, if we multiply the gamma 5 to x, it is a Hermitian operator. And let me denote this Hermitian operator, Dirac Hermitian operator by HW. Okay. Then overlap Dirac operator can be written in this expression. Okay. So this is nothing but x dagger x, but we can write the, the square of the Hermitian Dirac operator because of the chiral uh, conjugate relation with gamma phi. Then we can say that if this square HW, square of HW uh, has a uh, bound from and above with some positive constant alpha beta, then we can show that the kernel of the inverse of square root of HW square is satisfy the exponential uh, bound with respect to the distance x minus y. Okay. And uh, the coefficient is of the order of inverse that is spacing. So in this, uh, in this way, we can assume, assume we can, in, if this lattice Dirac operator satisfies this relation, we call lattice Dirac, this lattice operator is local. Because the at, at large distance, the coupling decays exponentially fast. Okay. So this is a condition for the locality. So HW square should have a positive uh, bound and a lower bound and the upper bound in this way. Okay. Then uh, we can show, we can uh, then when we can satisfy this condition. And it depends on the gauge field. And uh, we can show that if the bracket variable difference from the uh, unity is bounded by some certain, certain small constant, then we can show explicitly on the lattice that the square of HW is bounded from below by, by this constant with epsilon okay, from, above, from below. And the, if epsilon can be chosen less than 130, then this gives a positive constant. Then we can uh, have a lower bound like this. Okay. So uh, if we, we call this condition on the bracket variable as admissibility condition for the gauge link variables. Okay. And uh, we, you can understand this kind of uh, bound, uh, the necessary necessity of this kind of bound in, even in the continuum limit. If you consider the continuum Dirac operator minus unity, and uh, if you consider the, its dagger and this combination, you can estimate this expression as follows. And here you have a positive part. This part is positive definite. And you have a linear part in terms, uh, you have a collection term in terms of the field strengths here. So if you have a very large field strength, then this can be uh, zero, okay? But if you have a certain bound on the size of the field strength, this, since this factor is positive definite, you can always have a lower positive bound. So, okay. So we call this condition for the bracket variable uh, is as admissibility condition. And if we gauge link field satisfy this bound, then we can say that this Dirac operator is local. Okay. So in this way, uh, we impose a certain condition for the size of the bracket variable to uh, have a local definition of the overlap Dirac operator. Okay. The second uh, comment about the overlap Dirac operator is index theorem on the lattice. Okay. Since the overlap Dirac operator looks like this, and then uh, we, you can show that the, the eigenvalue of 
the of the Dirac operator distribute on the this kind of circle pitch turns into the imaginary axis at zero. Okay. And then you if you have a, a zero mode, zero eigenvalue here, you can show that the, uh, that chiral zero mode is actually uh, chiral in the usual sense with the usual gamma five. Since you can show if you have a zero mode, if you multiply this one, then using the uh, Ginsburg Wilson relation and gamma five on this field, gamma five commutes with Dirac operator. This means that we can choose the zero, zero mode on the lattice as a chiral eigenstate in the usual sense. Then we can define the, the index of the Dirac operator as usual. Okay, so zero mode of the lattice Dirac operator has a definite chirality. Then you can count the positive zero mode and the number of positive uh, zero mode and the negative eigen negative zero mode. And you can take the difference and it defines the index of overlap Dirac operator. On the other hand, uh, if we have a HW here, Hamishan Wilson Dirac operator with a negative mass of order the lattice spacing, inverse lattice spacing, you can count the topological charge of the gauge link field through the spectral flow of HW. And so as a, by the spectral asymmetry of the HW, we can define the topological charge. In this figure, I showed the certain spectral flow for the uh, two-dimensional U1 instantons. Okay. If you, here, as you can see, if you have a mass parameter uh, in this region, you can see the spectral flow okay. for, the, uh, for the U1 gauge field with a certain U1 gauge field with a topological charge. Okay. So by counting the spectral flow of the Hermitian uh, Wilson Dirac operator, uh, we can count the topological charge. Okay. And uh, this expression of the as spectral asymmetry HW is actually given by the, is equal to the uh, Jacobian of the chiral transformation defined by the here by Lucia, okay. And, and then, and with these uh, definitions, then we can establish the index theorem, which says that the index of Dirac operator is equal to the chiral Jacobian, of, uh, Jacobian of the chiral transformations. And that since this term is, nothing but the spectral asymmetry of the Hermitian Wilson Dirac operator, which can count the topological charge of the lattice gauge field, then this relation implies that the index theorem on the lattice. Okay. So uh, in this case, we have a, uh, we have a index theorem by on the finite, uh, with, on the lattice, uh, with a finite lattice spacing A. But it sounds very strange because on the lattice, uh, the, any link field can be deformed to the trivial link field continuously. So why this can happen on the lattice? And the trick is we are imposing the admissibility condition to make Dirac operator local. Okay, so let me briefly mentioned about this structure. So admissibility condition uh, assures that the Dirac operator is local. Then this chiral transformation makes sense even in the Dirac operator here, okay? Then since B E satisfies the ginzburg wilson relation, this chiral transformation gives the exact invariance of the action, but fermion major can change or Jacobian has a non, we can have a non-trivial Jacobian. Okay, 
and this produces this factor, uh, gamma five times d trace sum over the x lattice spacing. Okay? And this expression can define the topological charge of the gauge field or uh, in terms of the local lattice field summed over the lattice. Okay. On the other hand, since Dirac operator satisfies the ginzburg wilson relation, as I said, index of D is very defined. And between this index and the topological charge, we have a relation. And this is the index element. So in this way, uh, this admissibility condition, on the, uh, on the other hand, admissibility, since link field is satisfied, must satisfy these conditions, there emerges a some topological structure of the space of the uh, gauge field. Okay? And uh, this uh, non-trivial structure, so there is some sectors of the gauge field which cannot be connected continuously because of these admissibility conditions. And that each subset of such a connected link field is classified by this integer. So in this way, um, because of this admissibility condition, we can have an index theorem. Okay. Okay. So this is a trick of the, this is a, a rather tricky part or tricky stuff, tricky basis of the Ginzburg Wilson fermions. Okay. Excuse me, I have a question. Uh, yes. Uh, previous slides. Yes. Previous, yeah, this one. Uh, yes. So here, this circle is a spectrum of a Dirac operator. Uh, I wonder you you define this M matrix M operator. Uh, what is uh, whether that's M uh, eigenvalue of M matrix, maybe right one, the left one, are related to the eigenvalue of the Dirac operator? Yes. Uh, are they how, uh, identical or whether there's some relation? Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, it, uh, yeah, we can, uh, no, uh, actually, uh, mm, yeah, since, yeah, the, these basis uh, eigenvector of the gamma five hat. Yeah. Okay. And the gamma five hat is given by the, uh, actually the, uh, this, this operator. Okay. Okay. And uh, here we have we are considering the Dirac operator itself, and yeah. the Dirac operator is defined with this operator times gamma five plus one. So there is some mixing between the eigenvector of the H W and uh, or gamma five hat and the Dirac operator. So okay. There is certain relation, but uh, they have uh, they are mixed. Okay. In some sense, so there is no simple relation. Mm, yes. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, an, uh, another point I would like to comment is about the property of the something. Uh, yes. So about this uh, index theorem for uh, finite lattice spacing. So. Assuming yes. this admissibility condition, is it true that you can compute the index just by looking at the link variables as you can do in the continuum? Uh, mm, it should be yeah, a topological actually, invariant of the... Yeah, it's, yes. Uh, you mean, it, uh, you, you mean you take the continuum limit? No, I mean, uh, when you when you were talking about the index theorem, as far as I understand, you discussed some relations between quantities defined somehow in terms of this D, but in the continuum you have this, you have this relation that this index of D is given by the integral of some function of gauge fields only, yeah. right? Ah, yes, in yes. In the Dirac yes. operator itself. So do you, yeah. uh, this will certainly not be true if you don't assume this admissibility, but if you do this, then maybe so yeah, that, that's yeah. the question. Yes. Actually, topological charge Q is defined by the local sum uh, the sum over the lattice of uh, uh, sum of the local uh, topological charge density 
defined by this expression. Okay, so here trace e, trace is taken only for the spinner and the color degrees of freedom, and the lattice site is uh, 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 does not sum here. Okay, and uh, if you take the continuum limit of this expression, you can recover the usual representation for the Pontryagin uh, index. Uh, tom, uh, uh, usual expression for the uh, topological charge density, which is given by the F and F dual. Okay, so we can understand in the continuum limit that uh, this expression actually uh, converges to the usual expression for the topological charge. Okay, but at finite lattice spacing, it has a very complicated expression. Uh, what is the special about this number 130? Is it uh, some empirical uh, estimated number or is there, uh -huh. there is some numer analytical proof that this is the optimal? Uh, uh, could you repeat the question? Uh, what is uh, the special uh, about the band? bound 130 for admissibility condition. Is it some empirical estimate or there is analytical uh, way to show that this is uh, good to enough uh, to think that our operator will be uh, in some sense uh, local? Yes, yes. Uh, in, yeah, actually um, this condition with a rather small constant epsilon then the lattice gauge field is uh, uh, very, looks like the continuum lattice gauge field, actually. Okay. But in any way, since we can, if you do not uh, impose this condition, you can change, you can change the link variable in any way. Uh, you can deform the link variable to the a trivial link field uh, continuously. And uh, this condition forbids some such, uh, such deformation. And uh, because of this, you have some topological structure of the space of the lattice gauge field. Okay. So if you consider generic link variables on the lattice, then you cannot define the topological charge. But if it is uh, rather, uh, it, the, a certain uh, a link field looks like a continuum, and then we have a topological, uh, we can define the topological charge. So this condition implies such uh, condition. Okay. So link field uh, con uh, are actually approaching to the continuum link. Is it okay? This answers the questions to you. Are. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So let me uh, go on. Okay. Okay. So, so the next point about the uh, uh, property of the chiral determinant of overlap fermions. As I said, the path integral of the fermion major, path integral of Overlap wire fermion can be defined by introducing the chiral basis and expand the original wire field in terms of the certain Grassmann uh, variables. And then expression is given by this. Okay. And uh, as I said, and uh, Professor Aven uh, kindly asked, and yes, this, the size of the uh, shape of this matrix can be rectangle. Okay. And uh, as I said, n plus is the number of the basis for the right handed field, n minus is the number of the basis vectors for the left handed field Vi. The sum is uh, equal to uh, four times n c times volume, lattice volume. Okay. And uh, n plus minus n minus gives the spec number, the spectral asymmetry of this operator. And uh, this gives uh, uh, two times topological charge of the gauge field. 
Therefore, the anti field n plus bar plus n plus bar equal n minus bar equal um, half of total degrees of freedom for the anti field. Then you can see that n minus is depend on the topological charge, but n minus bar is fixed as n over two. Then if you have a non-trivial topological, ah, if you have a non-trivial admissible gauge link variable, which has a topological charge Q, non-vanishing, then you have a, a rectangular matrix for M. And then this determinant vanish identical. But in this case, you can insert the uh, field uh, to, th this means that the, the number of CI and the number of CJ bar is different. There, there is a difference between the number of CI and the number of CJ bar. Then you can insert a field psi minus or psi minus bar here to make this path integration non-vanishing. Okay, then you can have a, a vacuum expectation value of certain fermionic operator which breaks fermion number. In this way, uh, chi this uh, chiral determinant of overlap by fermion can reproduce the fermion number conservation okay. in this way. And that actually this operator defines the tofu to vertex. Okay. So this definition of the chiral determinant reproduces the zero mode, tofu to vertex, and fermion number conservation. Okay. Yes. So, but the question is, uh, then the question is how to define the, this chiral basis. But this pass integral measure, as I said, depends on the choice of the gauge uh, basis vectors. Okay, and uh, this means that the, this pass integral measure depends on the gauge field. And uh, here, by the unitary transformation of the chiral basis to another chiral basis, uh, then the Grassmann coefficient is also transformed by this chiral. I think someone. Uh, yeah. I will try to. Uh, excuse me, is this QCG 5D SCFT? Well, I just put it on hold. Um, please go on again. Sorry about this. Yes. That's an issue we are worried. Yes. Yeah, there are sometimes there are people who uh, who just uh, join maybe are uh, academic enthusiastic, but not enthusiastic in the right way. Oh, sorry. We apologize for that. Different. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, my apologies. Okay. Sorry. Yes, yes. Okay, so as I said that this path integral measure uh, depends on the choice of the chiral basis. Okay, then the measure transformed by the uh, determinant of the unitary transformation matrix. So this, there is some ambi there is ambiguity in the, its complex phase. And that this is in sharp contrast to the case of Dirac fermion in QCD-like series. It, the measure can be defined uh, by using the original uh, Dirac field as a basis of Grassmann variables. Okay. And that this is a manifestly gauge invariant and does not depend on the gauge field. Since psi and psi bar is an independent variable from the big variables. So then the, if you try to formulate the chiral gauge theory partition function with this overlap premiums, you must fix in any way the, this ambiguity. And the Russia formulated the way to do this, imposing some locality and gauge invariance integrability. And he, he 
uh, formulated a way to reconstruct the, this basis vector from certain uh, to formulate it, to construct the basis vector which satisfies these conditions if you consider the for the anomaly free chiral gauge series. Okay, so locality and gauge invariance and the integrability, which means there is no global anomaly. Okay, so and uh, in this approach so far, we only have a U1 chiral gauge theory and the SU times U1 chiral gauge theories. And uh, for generic non abelian gauge theories, we do not have uh, the answer to formulate this basis vector in a satisfactory way. Okay, so this is a story about the overlap by fermions. Yes. And uh, uh, so let me uh, discuss about uh, this overlap fermion with the lattice domain wall fermion. And also the, for the topological insulator or topological superconductor for later convenience, okay? So if the domain wall fermion is defined by the five dimensional Wilson fermion with a negative mass or positive mass, here we have a five-dimensional Wilson Dirac operator with a mass of order inverse lattice spacing. Okay. And uh, the negative part and the interface between the positive mass region and the negative mass region, we have a, a domain wall and a, a chiral fermion uh, bounded to bounded to that domain wall. And to define such domain wall fermion in a finite interval, we usually impose so directly boundary condition just outside of this region, okay? Or uh, we just uh, impose the open boundary condition. And and uh, for the vector-like setup, which we call uh, the gauge field, in the vector-like setup we consider the five-dimensional link field, which is uniform in the five-dimensional direction, five fifth directions, which means that the, the same four-dimensional link field coupled to this uh, chiral mode and uh, the other uh, chiral mode. So we defer, since the uh, chirality plus and minus premium coupled to the same gauge field, we uh, call this setup vector-like, okay? The, in this case, the, the partition function of the original domain wall fermion defined by the Dirac Dirac boundary condition, if it is divided by the uh, same operator uh, defined with the anti-periodic boundary condition here and here, and then the, uh, the, this combination actually reproduces uh, the overlap fermion determinant. So this ratio of the five-dimensional determinant is given by the determ four-dimensional determinant of the overlap Dirac operator defined in these expressions. A slightly different from the original one. But if we take the continuum limit in the fifth direction, then you recover the uh, original definition of the overlap Dirac operator. So this is a rigorous result at the finite lattice spacing A, A given by Neuberger. Okay. So this means that we can, so original Dirac operator contains some light, uh, some a contribution from the very light fermions. And that, that part can be a uh, factorized by the uh, contribution of the overlap lattice Dirac operator times the, this uh, five dimensional bulk determinant with anti-periodic boundary condition, which only contains massive fermions, since we do not have a boundary in this case. Okay, so in this way, we can have a, a local, uh, and uh, since Dirac operator is local, we can formulate a local lattice theory 
for the、uh, light or chiral mode of the domain wall fermion. Okay, in this way. So, in this sense, the overlap Dirac operator、uh, defines the local effective theory, local、uh, low energy effective lattice model of the domain wall fermion. Okay. Then let me、uh, next、uh, mention about the、uh, relation to the 4D, four dimensional topological insulator or topological superconductor. And that、uh, this,、uh, so let me consider the free fermion representation of the topological insulator in four dimensions, like this. In the free case, we consider the、uh, action is written in terms of the momentum. And that this model was used by Professor Wen and Juven and Professor Wen、uh, in their discussion about the construction of SO10 chiral gauge theory in this approach.、Okay. And uh, this uh, topological insulator、uh, of b r e e fermion is classified if we consider the TI case,、uh, I think it is classified by A2 and uh, uh, classified by integer. And if we include the Majorana mass to break U1, this、uh, fermion is type 3 and classified by num.、Okay? So trivial, only trivial phase, with only trivial phase.、Okay? And uh, uh, if you have a boundary like this, then the H chiral mode that is described by low energy effective 3D Hamiltonian, like this. So, this is the way you are、uh, discussing the boundary fermions. But if you, but this,、uh, this lattice fermion theory is nothing but the, the Hamiltonian formulation of four plus one dim, five dimensional domain wall fermions,、okay, as discussed by these people. Then we can consider、uh, the five dimensional Euclidean description. Of this topological insulator or topological superconductor. And then this is nothing but this is nothing is but the five dimensional domain wall fermion in this way. So this means that the, this chiral edge mode can be described directly on the lattice, I mean the three plus one dimensional lattice, by low energy effective three plus one D lattice model of overlap wire fermions. So,、uh, we can describe the boundary H chiral mode、okay? and by the overlap fermions, overlap by fermions without taking the continuum limit to describe the low energy physics. So,、uh, in, this, in this way, we can connect the approach with the overlap fermions to the、uh, approach to the Four dimensional topological insulator or topological superconductor. Okay. So, okay. so, now let me discuss how to formulate the SO10 chiral gauge theory with overlap wire fermion. So,、uh, there is several ways to do this. And the first way is Follow the Lucia's proposal, but we know it is very tough problem、okay, so far. Then we can consider、uh, the mirror fermion approach. Okay, so we can, we can we first consider the overlap Dirac field and try to、uh, decouple the mirror degrees of freedom out of overlap Dirac fermion. The first approach is this approach is called Miller Ginzburg Wilson fermion approach,、uh, first studied by Popitz, Professor Popitz and his collaborators.、Okay. And they introduced multi fermion interactions or Yukawa interactions for the、uh, Miller sector and try to decouple by、uh, certain strong coupling dynamics. Okay. The same, since the, since the overlap Dirac fermion and the domain wall fermion is related, 
as I discussed, then you can do the similar thing with the domain wall fermion by introducing a certain uh, boundary interaction. Okay? And uh, this approach was first uh, considered by Kreutz long ago, uh, just after the domain wall fermion is proposed, was proposed. And also recently, uh, from the point of view of the topological insulator and topological superconductor, Professor Ben and Prof. Juven and Professor Ben consider to consider to formulate a uh, certain chiral base theory with by e using the four-dimensional topological insulator or topological superconductor by introducing boundary or bulk interactions and uh, to gap to make the boundary phase gapped. Okay. So, in, so since I, as I discussed, this approach, if you work in the Euclidean space, is directly related to the domain wall premium. So uh, we uh, can have, uh, we can consider this uh, relation in terms of uh, this approach of topological insulator or topological superconductor by the overlap fermion approach. Okay, okay. and that, and that in my approach, uh, we, I try to saturate the right hand part of the direct measure by the top root vertices. And that this approach is actually a very closely related to these three approaches. And actually, uh, it is also related to the old approach by Einstein Presky model. Okay. So, uh, so, okay. And uh, in the Miller Ginsburg Wilson Premium, first studied by Pop Professor Popitz, uh, we consider first the Dirac Premium in this way. And uh, for the, but in, if we use the Ginzburg Wilson premiums, it can be factorized into the left handed part and right handed part completely. Okay. Then you can introduce the certain interactions. In this case, I wrote down the Yukawa coupling with the, uh, uh, yeah, we, I'm considering the SO10 case. And the, you can have a Majorana type by linear operator. Uh, which transforms uh, as the uh, as a certain vector with this TA matrix. And then we can couple the certain vector scalar XA. So we have a, a bilinear a certain vector uh, operator here. And here we have a, a certain vector scalar. And we can have a Yukawa coupling in this. And uh, this is for the field, and this is for the anti-field. And you can also introduce the certain action for the a certain, spin, a certain vector spin field in this way, x and x bar. Yes. Okay. And in this case, since we have a Dirac field, psi minus and psi plus, so we can define the functional measure, fermion measure, uh, as a Dirac fermion measure. And that uh, this is very simple in this case, okay? And then try to ch uh, arrange the, these Yukawa couplings and the couplings of the bosonic degrees of freedom. Uh, one, uh, one may try to decouple of the right-handed field or decouple, one may try to decouple the mirror fermions. And for this, gauge symmetry must be preserved and the only massive gap excitation in the mirror sector. And uh, we, on, we should have only massive excitation. And uh, because of, and uh, only local, local, uh, only local uh, gauge invariant, uh, no, only local uh, terms in terms of the gauge field left in the effective action. So, uh, so in this way, 
Uh, so we must search uh, in the phase space of this model uh, where we can achieve these conditions. And for this, uh, certainly we must have a we must have a disordered uh, phase, and uh, and uh, we expect such phase exists at the strong coupling region, and uh, it, that such phase is called paramagnetic strong coupling phase, PMS phase. Okay. Okay. The same thing can be a, the same approach can be a, expressed in terms of the domain ball fermions. And in this case, we have a five dimensional domain ball fermion with a ball at this, and uh, we have a two chiral ball, domain ball. And uh, by uh, choosing the boundary field variable Q and Q bar as a combination of the field minus here, and psi minus here, and psi plus here, and a uh, uh, similar uh, definition for the anti field Q bar. And then we can introduce the similar Yukawa coupling with the uh, SOTM vector spin field at the wall. Then uh, by arranging the Yukawa coupling or uh, coupling in the bosonic sector, we can try to uh, decouple or make massive of this uh, fermion mode. Okay. In this case, the interaction is introduced for this field, Psi plus. Okay. And uh, we can try to search the paramagnetic symmetric phase in this case. And, uh, and uh, uh, approach with the, in the approach with the four-dimensional topological insulator or a topological superconductor with gap boundary phase uh, as proposed by Professor Ben and uh, Juven and Ben, uh, they consider, Professor Ben considers a certain case and uh, uh, he uh, introduces a uh, certain invariant uh, Yukawa coupling similar to the, this one. Okay. And I uh, try to decouple or try to phase the uh, uh, boundary phase gap um, by considering a uh, SOTM vector spin field. Okay. And uh, he argued that uh, since if SOTM spin vector field has a finite uh, norm, then you can argue um, by you can argue that uh, symmetry breaking does not no symmetry breaking and no vortices um, with sorry okay and uh, since uh, and uh, if you have a finite uh, norm for the SO10 spin field SO10 uh, spin a certain vector spin field, then the configuration space uh, is a uh, target space of the spin field is S9. And then multiple group are vanishing in four dimensions. So uh, we expect no symmetry break, no vortices with massless premium excitations, and no pessimism written terms. And so, uh, so uh, there is no obstruction to make the fermion massive with this coupling. Okay. So in this way, uh, in this manner, uh, he, he argued that uh, it is possible by uh, this interaction to uh, make, uh, it is possible to make uh, the boundary uh, phase gap with this type of interaction by suitable uh, adjustment of the interaction terms. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so this is, and so these are the, uh, since these three approaches, uh, since these three in approaches are related, and uh, so we can consider uh, to make 
the uh, okay as I, I as I discussed these three approaches are related to each other and uh, we can discuss uh, uh, in the Euclidean formulation with overlap fermion okay. and that uh, to consider how to gap the mirror fermion sector uh, it is instructive it is very instructive to reconsider the Einstein Preskill model. Okay, so let me uh, next discuss the okay. Let me discuss the let me mention about the let me discuss about the, the original uh, Einstein Preskill model. And uh, in this uh, uh, in the Einstein Preskill model. Uh, they consider the naive wild fermions with usual chiral projection. And the uh, psi minus and psi bar, I assume that psi minus and psi minus bar belongs to the 16 dimensional representation of SO10. And then he, they consider the usual uh, ki kinetic term. Okay. And uh, then and they introduce the a Tofut vertex type interaction, four fermion interactions. And they also introduce the so called generalized Wilson term, like this. And the, since this is a naive fermion, uh, there are uh, species doublers. In this case, we have a, a eight a 16 dimensional left handed fermions and uh, 16 dimensional. Uh, eight uh, right-handed 16-dimensional fermions, okay? And uh, by these interactions, they try to, uh, uh, they try to separate the light single left-handed fermion and the other massive fermions. And uh, they try to find such a, a spectrum by tuning these couplings. So fine tune to the massless limit of this fermion, single fermion, within a certain symmetric phase. So this is uh, uh, this is what they uh, try to do. Okay, and uh, in the study of this model, they uh, found that in the strong coupling limit of the this uh, four fermion interaction which is nothing but the Tofut operator, they find that the pass integral measure for the uh, wild fermion field, which is defined by the a naive way in this way, for the naive fermions, they found that the, and in the strong coupling limit, the pass integral measure can be saturated in this way. Okay. So, okay, and the, for the anti-field and the, for the field. Okay, since we have a 32 components at the a site, then you have a, a here we have a Tofut vertex to eight powers, eight powers. Then you have a, a 32 components of the Dirac field, uh, wire field on each lattice site. Then you can have a finite uh, number uh, by this pass integration. Okay, and then and then uh, you can, in, from this strong coupling limit of the Tofus vertex interaction, this part, you can perturb the kinetic term and the uh, Wilson term. Then they found that the, the fermion are all massive by the mixing with the composite right-handed states given by these composite operators. So in this case, and the, in the strong coupling limit, the, all the fermion become massive in this mechanism. And uh, I uh, refer this uh, fact but that uh, the saturation of the lattice fermion measure due to the Tofut vertices. Okay, so all the degrees of freedom, the pass integration for the all the degrees of freedom is just uh, saturated by this operators. To give a non-zero values. Okay. So, Excuse me. Yes. 
Yes. Uh, when you mention a strong coupling limit, do you mean the infinite coupling limit, or you mean this uh, intermediate order one interaction limit? Yeah, in this case, uh, by the descaling of this, this way, by descaling this way, and uh, the limit is actually defined as the finite coupling for this four fermion operator. Okay. And uh, these kinetic terms and these Wilson terms vanish identically. Oh, I see. So lambda goes to infinity, basically. Yeah, yeah. Lambda okay. goes to infinity, but you can descale the lattice field so that these kinetic terms and the Wilson terms vanish. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then anyway, in the bare field, uh, it means that the lambda goes to infinity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, since we are working with lattice, Euclidean lattice field theory, uh, if we have this kind of property, saturation of the measure, uh, uh, the limit is very defined. And uh, the perturbation from that limit is also very defined. This is a claim by the Einstein Presque. And uh, so I refer this property as saturation of the lattice fermion measure due to the Tofut vertices. And uh, uh, in the SO10 case, this is uh, uh, another, this may be another special property of the SO10 case. But uh, in any way, in this model, we have this property. And uh, I think this is very uh, important uh, for the constru lattice construction for the uh, SO10 chiral gauge theory. And so uh, this saturation of the lattice fermion measure due to Tofut vertices in SO10 chiral model, lattice model. And uh, this, is, uh, this property is for the naive wire fermions. Okay. But uh, we, uh, so I would like to uh, uh, discuss, this is also the case for the overlap wire fermions. This is uh, what I want to discuss in the following. Okay. okay, so now let me define the gauge invariant path integral. Okay, so so far, uh, do you have any questions about uh, several approaches? <laughs> okay, so let me. Continue, okay. Yes. Now, okay, so, okay. So now uh, let me discuss the SO10 chiral gauge theory with overlap value fermions. So we uh, assume the lattice units, and so I set the lattice spacing is equal to one. And we consider the finite lattice with the size of L2 force. And uh, we adopt uh, the uh, bracket action, which impose the admissibility condition dynamically with this uh, denominator factor. Okay. And uh, for fermions, we consider first the Dirac fermion in the 16-dimensional representation, and, and consider that lattice uh, overlap Dirac operator acting of psi, and then uh, project to the uh, wire fermion by the chiral oper projection operator of psi minus half defined with gamma five half and the P plus with the, defined with the usual gamma five. Okay. So we have a wire fermion in 16 dimensional representation and, uh, uh, and the action is defined by this. Okay. So we adopt this gauge field action and the wire field action. And uh, classically, and this is a uh, consistent formulation. Okay. And then let me discuss about the topology of a certain lattice gauge field. In this case, we can define the topological charge. Topological charge of the spin 10 gauge field is defined by this expression uh, according to the index theorem on the lattice. Okay. We can define in this way. And uh, factor one over eight is 
comes from the uh, normalization of the generator of the spin time. Okay. And the index theorem state that the index D is given by minus eight Q in this case. And we can consider the SU2 instanton embedding in the spin 10 gauge field. In this case, the index D is given by the a certain, given by the, uh, by this expression. And the Q is a topological charge of instantons embedded in certain SU2. Okay. Then the, we have a, a coefficient M. And uh, we uh, can check that this M is always an uh, integer multiple of four. Okay. And uh, so the, we, since we have a, so the zero mode can be saturated by the certain product of the, this four fermion operator, as I discussed. Okay. Then uh, let me discuss uh, how to uh, define the path integral measure gauge invariant manner, manifestly gauge invariant manner for the overlap fermion in this case. So we define the left handle field while fermion measure. Uh, we define the while fermion measure of left handle while fermion measure by the usual Dirac operator measure times the a certain product of the uh, tra um, Tofut vertices defined for the right handle field. Okay. So uh, this Dirac measure is defined by the uh, simple way here. And the T plus and the T plus bar is defined by the uh, whole fermion operator with the light handle field defined by the Ginzburg-Wilson relation. Okay. And here we use the uh, four spinner representation, four spinner notation. Okay. And, uh, if you consider the chiral fermion, uh, overlap fermions, we usually insert the P plus operator here. But we do not do this. Because if you insert P plus here, you can show that this is this, this operator here. Since we have a right handed field, we have a projection to the right handed fermions, P plus and P plus transpose. And here, if we have a T P plus here, you can show that this relation, and you have a one minus D factor. And uh, this implies that the, this factor uh, project out to the eigen mode of the operator with eigen value plus one. Okay. So this is this, this implies that the species doublers are projected out by this operator. And uh, since this type of operator has a good chiral property under the chiral transformation defined with the ginzburg wilson relations, and usually we use these expressions. But for our purpose, uh, the, if, we, this, if we use this type of operator here instead of this one, uh, it is not good for our purpose to saturate all degrees of freedom of the right hand field okay, because of this project. So we try this factor without this chiral projection. Okay. And that this is related to the work by Professor Popitz in the two dimensional cases. In any way, uh, we define uh, Tohutu vertex in this way. And uh, as a product here, F is a certain product function, a function of function to express the product of the Tofut vertices. And here we choose this uh, function given by this expression. So we assume F is given by this expression okay, and that this expansion. And that this expansion has a integral representation with a certain spin field actually, like this. So we choose this one. Okay, and that this is related to the condition of the a certain spin vector uh, discussed by the uh, professor Wen Wen here. Okay, so uh, we actually impose by hand this condition 
for the SO10 vector field, auxiliary field. So in this way, we define the uh, pass integral measure for the left-handed field with the Dirac measure, uh, okay, times the uh, product of the Toffut vertices for the right-handed field. Okay. And, uh, and uh, by inserting this factor, we I'm trying to saturate all degrees of freedom of the right-handed fermion. And then the remaining part is for the left-handed wire filament. Okay. So with this definition of the measure, the partition function of the uh, chiral gauge theory is defined by the integration of the link field with the gauge field action and the induced effective action of wire fermions. The, and the induced effective action is defined by the pass integration over the left-handed field with a certain measure with the action here. And now I define this uh, wire fermion measure with the Dirac fermion measure times the Toffut vertices. And here we have a left-handed action, uh, action for the left-handed field. Okay. So the effective action uh, is given this expression. And by using these integral representations, we can introduce the SO10 vector spin field as an auxiliary field, and then we can write the pass integral using pass integration of the spin 10, uh, spin uh, vector, SO10 vector field, E and E bar. And the action is actually, actually given by the original action for the left handed field. And here we have a uh, product of the SO10 vector field and the bilinear SO10 uh, operator, SO10 vector operator, okay, in terms of right hand field, psi plus and psi plus bar. Okay. So this, this looks like the uh, Yukawa terms, but uh, here uh, I do not introduce the kinetic term for the psi plus and psi plus bar. Okay, only the Yukawa terms. Okay. And then we can show that this uh, integration or pass integration, then we can perform the pass integration for the Dirac field psi, psi bar here. Then you, we get the, the expression for the effective action for the wire field uh, given by this uh, uh, expression. So we have three uh, factorized uh, contributions. And the first factor is nothing but the chiral determinant for the left-handed field, okay, left-handed degrees of freedom. And for the right-handed field, since we have a bilinear operator, Majorana type bilinear operators, we have a Paffian integrated over the auxiliary spin 10 vector field for the field and for the anti-field. Right handed field. Okay. And uh, uh, to show this factorization, we can, if we introduce the chiral basis for the, uh, and uh, write the Dirac fermion uh, measure in terms of the uh, left and right handed field, then you can see explicitly that the, this factorization property. Now, let me discuss about the, uh, these three factors. As I said, this factor gives the chiral determinant. So left-handed part is, uh, is a good property, as I discussed. It reproduces the zero modes and the Toffut vertex vacuum expectation value and fermion number non-conservation. And uh, this is just a... Uh, uh, this uh, part expresses the uh, contribution of the left-handed wire fermion. On the other hand, uh, this factor, or the first, second factor, is defined by this matrix in terms of the right-handed chiral basis, okay, with, with the SO10 spinner uh, field here. And uh, this matrix is anti-symmetric, and uh, Paffian 
And the size of this matrix is given by this number, depending on the topological charge, but it remains even. So this matrix is uh, a square matrix and its size can different with can the size can size is variable with respect to the uh, with the topological charge of the gauge field but it remains square and the size is even so the perfume does not vanish uh, identically in general and the same thing happens for the this anti-field contribution this matrix is uh, square uh, fixed size matrix with even the size is even so this uh, part the perfume of this matrix um, also does not vanish in general I, I does not vanish identically in general okay so in this mat in this way we can expect that in every topological sectors with different topological charge this factor and this factor this perfume and this perfume does not vanish identically and after the pass integration over the auxiliary spin field uh, we can have a non-vanishing result in general okay. and uh, as i said this chiral determinant depends on the choice of the basis vector but here this perfume is also depend on the choice of basis but the dependence on v and the dependence of u can uh, uh, cancel each other because total Dirac fermion is an uh, independent variable of the gauge field from the gauge field. So, uh, dependence, gauge field dependence of U and gauge field dependence of U, uh, V and U cancelled in this expression. So, uh, this effective action does not depend on the choice of the chiral basis. Okay. So, in this way, uh, we can fix the phase uh, ambiguity in this expression. So, so this is uh, my proposal to define the path integral measure of the result and chiral uh, gauge theory with 16 dimensional representation. And the symmetry structure is, gauge symmetry is manifest because of the Dirac fermion measure. And the fermion number symmetry of the left-handed field is anomalous due to the non-trivial transformation of the fermion measure or, uh, by, uh, or the non-trivial, non-vanishing vacuum expectation value of the Stoffelt vertex. Okay. And uh, for the right-handed field, fermion number symmetry is broken to the Z4 times Z4. And uh, we have two factor of Z4 because we do not introduce the kinetic term of the right hand field. And, uh, uh, and uh, we can show uh, by a certain, uh, we can show uh, that the effective action of the wild fermion is CP invariant. Okay. Uh, I do not have enough time to do this, to prove this, but uh, it is uh, possible to prove uh, that the effective action with this definition of the measure is with this definition of the measure effective action with respect to the gauge link variable is CP invariant and uh, this is uh, and the proof can be we can prove this CP invariance uh, thanks to this choice of the uh, product function using the SO10 spin vector field. Okay. So, so this is my proposal for the fermion, uh, wild fermion measure. Okay. So, do you have any questions so far? May I ask a question? Yes. Hi. 
Nice Hi. to meet you, by the way. Nice to meet you, met. Yeah, uh, Professor. Uh, thank so, you. Uh, I was just wondering. So the seamless structure is very interesting. I have two questions. So, uh, how do you know that the mirror fermions are heavy? Ah, uh, yes. Let me discuss this. Uh, right and, now. And, and and the other. I, let me ask the other question because it's closely related. It. So there is these two Z four symmetries. You yes. know, back then we didn't worry about discrete tooth anomalies. Are there any yes. tooth anomalies due to the symmetries that may cause some trouble in the infrared? You know, I'm just curious. Uh, yes, um, uh, uh, I don't know the answer yet. Okay, yeah. but please tell us about the spectrum. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So, excuse me, I have yes. another question. Is any of the Z4 here a share a normal cell group of uh, Z2, which is the same as the fermion parity, minus one to the power of fermion number? Is any of Z4 has the normal cell group, which the normal cell group is the fermion parity Z2? Yes. There is uh, one. There's one. Yeah, this, this comes from the U1 transformation fermion number symmetry of the uh, light handed field and also light handed anti field. Okay, so it, it should be related to the fermion parity Z2 symmetry. Is this part of Z4 uh, a U1 subgroup, which the U1 is B minus L, baryon minus lepton? Uh, yes. I see. Yeah, for the right handed field. I see. Uh, no, no, they no, are... no, 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 no. It is not related to the B minus L. Actually, it is gauged in the yeah, that's, that's true. So but, but then, okay, but then let me just make sure. So, but you say one of the Z4. No, but then there will be no performance parity then, sorry, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit confused. Is there performance parity, a uh, normal cell group inside the Z4? That's the question I was asking. Uh, I'm not sure, but... Uh... Because there's a fact, I'm not sure should I share it now, but uh, uh, when the space time is a spin manifold, yeah. if you have additional Z4 such that Z4 contain fermion parity Z2, and if the mm -hmm. overall space time structure is spin time Z4 mod Z2, I know that uh, there's an anomaly of Z16 come up, basically. Uh -huh. That's a yeah. fair I'm trying to say. But uh, yeah. Z4 is important in some way, but uh, I'm not sure whether this Z4 is the same as the one you say. The thing is that uh, if the Z4 contain from yeah, parity. Yeah, I think it comes from the fermion um, number symmetry. Right. And, uh, ah, yes, different. So in the spin 10 model, spin the spin 10 in the end, Spin 10 need to be gauged. Uh, yeah. But if I regard this as an internal symmetry first, spin 10 is internal. Yes. And Z4 can also be internal, and spin 10 and Z4 might share something. Uh, or oh, sorry, actually not, not quite. Actually, it's a spin group, and uh, Z4 share something. I think also share with spin 10. Because right now, maybe you are trying to deal with gauge theory, so it may be a bit uh, tricky to distinguish the, the gauge part and the internal global symmetry. Mm -hmm. If I treat everything as internal, then I can write down the group precisely. And yes. you can tell there will be a Z4 somewhere, such as a Z4 and spin group of space-time symmetry spin group, not a spin 10 or SO10. It's a spin, it's a spatial, spatial uh, rotational symmetry of the spin group. Mm -hmm. uh, of space time manifold and the spin 10 actually all share a Z2. Mm -hmm. And that, that Z2 is inside a certain Z4. That's basically one comment. Yeah, but uh, this, this, U1, uh, this Z4 comes from the fermion number symmetry, U1 fermion number symmetry. Right, right. That's also U1. Uh, yes. So yes. Independent of the, it is independent of the spin ten. That, that's true. Yeah, I'm but saying the, another another yeah. Z another U one or another Z four independent of spin ten. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there are such things. But the, 
Yeah, it should be related to the fermion parity in any way. But, but, but then you explain one of the z4, but there's two z4. So yeah. what's the other z4? Yeah, yeah, the, the one z4 for the field of the right-handed field. Field, okay. right-handed, right-handed field. And uh, another z4 for the right-handed anti-field. Okay. And the since but, we do not have a oh, kinetic term. So it's yeah. because so they're independent yeah. variables and I it doesn't see. mix them in the kinetic term. It's a very strange thing, you know. But, yeah. but should they be combined as the same one? Because in my language, they'll be the same Z4. Uh, yes. I see. Okay, then I know this is Z4, I think. Mm, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. And uh, uh, since I uh, used two hours already, so uh, what should I do? Uh, you should take your time. People, <laughs> People yeah. can do that one. It's fine because it's very hard already for you to speak and then speak to this level. And since we want to know the details, they will be happy to. People who want to leave, they can leave, and we we just continue until okay. you are done. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah. Take your yeah time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, it's very kind of. Yes. No, it's very nice of you to speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so. So let me now discuss uh, the saturation of the measure. Uh, uh, so I'd like to check uh, it is indeed uh, uh, the saturation uh, happened indeed. Okay. So the first part and uh, the second uh, the sub part of, uh, so let me discuss the saturation of the right-handed part of the premium measure by two foot vertices uh, more, okay. And uh, for the right hand, uh, for so we, as as I said, the uh, effective action given by these expressions. Okay, the first part is just the chiral determinant for the left handed field and the physical part. And the the second and third part comes from the uh, 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 inserting the tofuto vertices for the right handed field and right handed anti field. Okay, so uh, now let me ex examine these factors in more detail, okay? So, so first let me discuss about the part of the anti-field, okay? So in this case, we can show rigorously that this Paphian is actually a unity independent of the back and um, auxiliary spin 10 uh, vector field, or so 10 vector field, okay? Then the path integration over the uh, auxiliary field give rise to the unity a certain constant. And in this case, we have a unity um, by the normalization of the path integration. And uh, this is because uh, the right-handed anti-field is defined by the usual gamma phi, uh, gamma phi. Then we can choose uh, the chiral basis for the U uh, of this field uh, as a local one, or it, which is independent of the gauge field. Then we can have an expression, explicit expression for this matrix given by this uh, factorized form. Then you can compute uh, the Paphian explicitly, uh, and we, we can see that Paphian is actually a independent of the background spin field. Okay, and the, actually it is a unity. Then we have uh, this one. So the right-handed anti-field part measure is actually saturated. And uh, this is nothing but the result um, by the Einstein press cube uh, with the naive wire fermions, okay? The right-handed anti-field is just the same for the uh, Einstein press cube result. Okay, so this is easy, okay? The next part, next, and uh, let me discuss by uh, uh, let me discuss about the field part, right-handed field part. Okay, in this case, the basis vector can depend on the gauge field because the projection operator can depend on the gauge field, and uh, this matrix has a uh, as I said, this is the anti-symmetric matrix square matrix with a variable size but the size is even. So this Paphian uh, does not vanish identically in general. 
but uh, we need so we need to check. But uh, this uh, since the basis uh, can be chosen, uh, since we cannot choose these basis vectors, uh, uh, since uh, we have a rather complicated expression for the this basis. Uh, we cannot know. Actually, we do not uh, have a rigorous proof that this integration over the, uh, this Puffian integration over the, uh, this path integral um, over the spin uh, vector, uh, SO10 vector spin field uh, gives a non vanishing result for all possible. Uh, admissible gauge field. So I do not have a rigorous proof for this statement. But in general, Puffian of the matrix does not vanish identically. So we check numerically that the Puffian stays real positive semi definite for randomly generated SO10 vector spin field with several background gauge field in field. And uh, the, these results suggest that the non-vanishing Puffian pass integral. Okay, so uh, the the cases I considered is for, as follows. Uh, as follows, we first consider I first consider the case with a trivial link field. So link field is a unity, and another case is SU two link field embedding in this spin ten. Which uh, can have which have a non non trivial or non zero topological charge. So this SU2 link field can represent a uh, topological sector, some topological sectors. And I choose link variable like this. Here sigma one two is a generator of spin uh, ten. Okay, and the SU2 part of spin ten. And here, theta one, two is chosen. The field, okay, this gauge field is chosen in this way. And the field gives rise to a uniform uh, field tensor in zero one direction and two, three direction. And by this product, um, topological charge is given in this expression. So, uh, in this case, we have a non-trivial topological charge. Okay, and then since Is these, you, yes, uh, you just want to have a SU two instanton, correct? Ah, uh, yes, but but in this case, this is not an instanton, but uh, uh, you yeah, we we may try to uh, put the instanton or map the instanton solution to the lattice, and we can do the similar computations. For the instant case, yeah. But for simplicity, I choose this one. <laughs> okay. But but I mean f which f term. Yes. Has non trivial value. Yeah, non trivial. Yes. In this. And I think why is it? Get a... Why is it even, by the way? Yes. Why is it even? Ah yes, this is because. Oh. Yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, this actually, um, because. Mm, yeah, if you uh, map the uh, continuum instant on solution on the lattice, then you can get the uh, uh, integer uh, topological charge. But uh, this special configuration uh, is uh, uh, like a U1 instant on in each two dimensional directions. And in this case, we always have an a, a even number. So. In this way, we cannot uh, produce the uh, integer, any integer topological charge, but, the, but only even case. So uh, yes, so this is, um, since we, we uh, since I'm considering the rather special way to have a non-trivial topological charge, this is actually uh, using the U1 instant ones in two dimensions. Uh, excuse me. Maybe yes. there's uh, one of the 
person who is co-host probably also know. So I just want to make sure his name is Du Pei. He may know as well. So uh, are you trying to uh, have a non-trivial, you say you are not trying to have a non-trivial instant on background for this? Ah, for yes. this. Uh, yeah, you, yes. I'm trying to put uh, some topological non-trivial right. uh, field in it's 10 field. Yeah. Background view, probably. It's, it's and background. The case, yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. But, but uh, so, uh, I, I, so the the first configuration is in the trivial topological set, and the right. second configuration is a non-trivial in the no, uh, in a certain non-trivial topological sector with this topological set. And uh, let uh, let me try both cases. Okay. But and, uh, for okay. each case, we can construct a basis vector u. Explicitly, explicitly by computing the eigenvector of the Hermitian Wilson Dirac operator. Then we can formulate, we can formulate, we can form the uh, matrix, this matrix. And then we can compute with a certain given uh, a certain vector field, spin field. Then we can uh, compute the eigenvector, uh, eigenvalues. And then check whether Parfian uh, we can see that Papian actually uh, stay real sem positive semi definite. Then we can show, then we can argue that the integration over E uh, does not vanish in, for such configurations. So I'm now trying to uh, have an explicit example of admissible link field for which this integration does not vanish. So can I, can I can I make comment? Maybe Dupe can also know uh, one slide earlier. Yes. So I'm wondering whether this uh, integration means that the trace of a uh, f-wave graph for the SU two, uh, the, the one 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 slide earlier. Yes, that this one. Uh, yes. Is that you are trying to do on torus, periodic or some boundary conditions? Torus, space time. Torus. 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 Torus, yes, yes. I sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, for dimensional torus. Torus, for dimensional torus. Yes, torus. So, so uh, all right. for gauge field and fermion field. Okay. Right. So, yeah. uh, I think, I think uh, if I do, do probably correct me if I say wrong. So, on spin manifold torus, then the SU twin centon is quantized integer value in Z. Yes. I suppose you are choosing certain instant number for this, and yeah. but however, I think uh, Eric also mentioned um, you seems to have even q. Q mm -hmm. is two times some integer. Yeah. Actually, I didn't get your explanation. So why do you choose two here? Maybe you explain. Hi, I, I was. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, after you are talking, why we have a uh, uh, integer even even top even even. Yeah, why not just uh, any integer? Yeah, so in, 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 in some sense, um, this uh, configuration consists of the uh, combination of U1 instantons and uh, not actually the SU2 instantons. But uh, uh, because, uh, ah, yes. Mm, yeah. So. This may not be the minimum one for SU2. Ah, so yes, yes. Not minimal one. Okay. Yeah. But uh, in any way, we can uh, have this kind of uh, uh, link feed on the lattice, on the torus, which gives rise to the non vanishing topological charge Q. No and, uh, but uh, uh, it cannot be deformed to the single instantons in this case. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Do, if you have a comment, please make. Yes. Uh, I don't completely understand why uh, if you have a two, then it's, sorry, are you saying that if instead the coefficient is one, then it can be a SU2 instanton and not a U1 instanton? Uh, yes, the way to formulate the, uh, yeah, so, okay. Yeah, so uh, in, in some sense, uh, this, this way, we put the 
あフラックスあーあーサムあーそうあいやいや、actually、uh, this expression uh, uh, comes from the U1 instant in two dimensional torus. Okay. And uh, by combining uh, uh, the U1 instant in different uh, direction, you can have a non trivial uh, topological charge. And uh, it is different from the SU2 instant. And this, uh, I, I think uh, may, maybe let me say something. I'm not sure, but Du can correct me. So I think uh, for S2 instant uh, we are saying the trace FOHF, which is the second train class C2 in four dimensions. Yes. And this number should be quantized in Z on spin manifolds, such as four. Ah, yes. However, yes. Uh, I think you can also uh, obtain some S2 instant by choosing, yeah. choosing the uh, sigma Z direction of SU2 generator in U1. And I think there could be some way to construct yeah. instant this also in Z. Yeah. But you are doing another way. You you construct instant from uh, a 2D F term in yes. U1, which yeah. is first C1. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yes. yeah. and maybe it's some relation is yes. C2 to C1 square. Yes. Yeah, C2 to yes. C1 square, maybe there's some, some factor to somewhere. Yes. Yeah, maybe one can work it out. I, I believe what you say. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I should uh, do this computation with uh, SU2 instant embedded topological. Ah, yeah, torus. But in any way, with these configurations, uh, this configuration can be bent in SO9 subgroup of SO10. Then we can show that the the, this matrix, which we try to compute the Paffian, uh, can be uh, written in terms of this type of matrix, inserting gamma five, gamma ten here, and the C is defined by the uh, this expression, but uh, this does not depend on the spin SO ten vector spin field. Okay, this is just a constant matrix, but it act. Uh, with this, uh, it acts on this matrix uh, in this relation. So we can show that this matrix has a uh, eigenvalue, uh, two-fold degenerate eigenvalue in this case. So C act like a charge conjugation matrix in this uh, right-handed field space. So the original matrix, since it is a complex antisymmetric matrix, it has a eigenvalue uh, comes in a pair with opposite uh, signature. But uh, this matrix has a degenerate eigenvalues. And the original Paffian of this matrix uh, can be expressed by the Paffian of this constant matrix times the half product of the degenerate eigenvalues. Okay, and now we uh, observe numerically. Uh, so for we uh, generate la randomly the SO10 vector spin and then compute the eigenvalue of this matrix and the eigenvalues of this matrix. And then we found that the eigenvalue structure of this matrix looks like this way, two-fold degeneracy and it comes with the complex conjugate pair. Okay. Then the half product of lambda i here stay real and positive semi-definite for randomly generated spin field. And this result suggests that uh, the non-vanishing Paffian path integration because this Paffian, this part stay real, sem real and positive semi-definite, okay? So let me show you the eigenvalue distribution of these two matrices for the trivial link field. Here we have uh, this one. And uh, we have a uh, uh, certain low-lying eigenvalues here, but we do not have a 
uh, vanishing eigenvalues. Okay, and uh, we can see that uh, we can the eigenvalue comes with uh, complex pair, complex conjugate pair. Okay, then the Paffian uh, stay real positive in this case. The spin field is uh, generated randomly, and uh, we uh, this is a typical uh, distribution. This this typical case for uh, of the uh, distribution eigenvalue distribution. And the second example is for this uh, uh, link field with non-vanishing topological field. In this case, uh, we also have a uh, low lying uh, eigenvalues, which comes from the zero mode of the Dirac operator we expect. And the, in this case, too, we have a similar structure of the eigenvalue distribution, which has this structure. Okay. So, by these examples, uh, uh, we can argue that the Paffian. Uh, Paffian uh, is Paffians are uh, uh, real positive semi definite, and then integration over the spin variables uh, it gives rise to a non vanishing result. Okay. So, in this way, uh, although so, uh, uh, the claim, uh, my claim is that for any link variable with admissibility, uh, satisfies satisfy the admissibility conditions, this integration does not vanish. This is a statement, this is a claim that the path integrals measure can be saturated by the Tofut vertices. And, uh, but I do not have a rigorous proof for this fact. But uh, for some examples, we can argue it is indeed the case. Okay, so I uh, showed numerical uh, result for these two configurations. Okay, so uh, I so in this way I, I argue that uh, similar result of so uh, I still practice show that the premium pass integral measure can be saturated to foot vertices for the naive lattice premiums with species doublers, but the uh, I argue that similar result holds true for the overlap premium. Okay. 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 And the second part is about locality. Okay. And uh, from this definition of the effective action, sorry. Yes, this one. So, by this expression, since I have shown that this factor is actually unity, so we only consider these two factors. And that this defines, this product defines the uh, effective action, exponential of the effective action, induced effective action for the Wilson, uh, while payments. Okay. Then, and uh, we can try uh, then or original or, uh, mm, yes, this measure can be written in this way. Okay. And now, uh, or with this expression, with the uh, using the auxiliary uh, SOTM vector spin field, uh, from these expressions, we can derive the uh, Schubinger Dyson equation for the link variables, gauge link variables. So this is the result of the Schwinger Dyson equation for the link variable. Okay. So delta eta uh, stands for the variation of the link variable with the variational parameter eta. Okay. Then the Schwinger Dyson equation for the gauge field is given by the insertion of the variation of the gauge action and the variation of the uh, action for the left-handed wire field. D depend on the gauge field here. And the, the third factor comes from the Tofut vertex terms. And uh, we can um, regard this third factor uh, is a contribution, uh, gauge field 
con contribution from the fermion measure. Okay. And uh, this contribution of the fermion measure should be a local function of the gauge link field. Okay. So, okay. So uh, these operators are all, all uh, local operators. So in this sense, Schrodinger Dyson equation is local. But uh, since this factor comes from the measure, this factor should be a local function of the link field. Okay, so uh, we need to check that it is indeed the case. This is the locality problem I mentioned. Okay, and uh, ex this expression is uh, yes. Here we a uh, vacuum expectation value means integration over the fermion only, and so this expression uh, is defined by this expression. Okay, so we have a, a correlation function of the right hand field with ins and uh, inserting at, uh, with the variation of the uh, projection operator in this way. Okay. And uh, this is a functional of the background gauge link variable. And uh, this factor should be a local functional of the link variables. And uh, a necessary and sufficient condition uh, can be formulated as follows. So this correlation function of the right-handed field uh, is satis satisfied a certain exponential bound and a similar bound for the variation with respect to the link field. If we have this uh, bound, then we can argue that gauge field dependence of the uh, major contribution is a local functional of the link field. And uh, in fact, by, the, by examining the, from the Spinger Dyson equation for the right hand field, we can derive this uh, correlation is given by just the projection operator. Okay. And uh, this satisfies, since this projection operator can be defined with Dirac operator, which satisfies similar bound as I discussed, so this part actually satisfies these conditions. But uh, there is another component. Here we have a P plus hat, and uh, we can insert P minus hat here. For this part, uh, we cannot derive the, a, a general expression through the, by the schwinger dyson equations. So we need to check this explicitly. And uh, we need to check the variation of this correlation function with respect to the gauge field. Okay. And in the weak coupling expansion, this expression should be expanded in terms of the vector potential, that is vector potential. And the coefficient uh, should be an analytic function with respect to the momenta of uh, background gauge field. Okay. So these two conditions should be checked uh, in any way. Otherwise, we cannot assure, assure that the major contribution has, uh, is actually local. So this is a problem about locality. And uh, for this locality condition are satisfied, we, we need to, like, since this factor is uh, given by the correlation function of right-hand field, psi plus and uh, uh, auxiliary spin field. In any way, these fields should be a uh, massive, okay? So if the right-hand field has a mass, then the correlation function of these field should be a, a satisfy this kind of exponential power. So we expect, so uh, the necessary condition is that all the right-handed field, uh, all the field in the right-handed sector, including the auxiliary certain spin field should be a massive. Okay. So I need to uh, examine uh, it is in this uh, case. For fermions, uh, we can derive the Schrodinger Dyson equation 
for the pen, we can for the uh, by examining the Schrodinger Dyson equation for the left and right handed field, as I said, we can derive these three uh, results. And the uh, left handed field is given by the, the two point function of the left handed field is given by the inverse of over the cooperator. So it should have a, uh, it, uh, it, uh, so this correlation has a long range uh, correlation. Okay, but in the left handed sector, we expect a massless fermions. It is an, uh, uh, reasonable result. On the other hand, the, in the right hand sector, as I said, the, this correlation function, psi plus and uh, this composite operator, two point function, uh, is given by the projection operator P plus half. And uh, for the anti field, this correlation function uh, gives by, given by the local contactor. So, uh, in for the for the fermion field in the right hand sector, we can have a very short range uh, correlation. So we expect these field should be massive. Okay, and uh, as to the assorted vector spin field, uh, since this path integration with this Puffian inserted uh, is defined is defines a kind of a certain vector spin model. So I applied a uh, well-known saddle point analysis for the vector spin model. Uh, I argue uh, we can check that a certain, a certain symmetry uh, can break or not. And if we assume the, this zero mode of the spin 10, okay, so since we are, we are working with the uh, a certain vector spin field with a norm unity, but to apply this subtle point analysis, we can impose this constraint by this auxiliary lambda field as usual. Then we consider the, uh, then we, con we separate the zero mode of spin field with the fluctuation mode. And then we can consider the path integration over the uh, fluctuation mode. And then we can obtain the effective action for the zero model as spin field. And we can check. Uh, so thus, in, and uh, we can derive the uh, condition for the non vanishing expectation value of the zero model of spin field. And if we have a non-vanishing expectation values, that uh, the norm of the spin vector field should be given by these expressions. And since this factor should be positive, this right hand the, this expression in the right hand side should be also positive. Okay. So and and we can check that this function, this uh, factor. Uh, how this factor behaves as a coupling of this spin field, a uh, spin uh, with respect to the coupling of this uh, lattice model, a certain vector spin model. And, but the possible coupling is just a mass parameter M0 in the uh, Hamishan Wilson Dirac operator. So I plot the F with respect to M0. So here we, so this is the result. This is the result for this factor. And as I said, if symmetry should be broken, this factor should be positive. And it turns out that this factor is always negative in the region of the mass parameter like this. And uh, from zero to two, we have a negative mass for the Wilson Dirac operator. And uh, if we have a negative M0, mean uh, we have a positive uh, mass for the overlap Dirac operator in this definition. Okay. And uh, in, in the entire region, I showed the, this function 
is always uh, negative, which means that symmetry breaking does not occur. And uh, this condition, this result shows that the fluctuation of spin field is large, uh, uh, is too large to maintain the symmetry breaking or non-vanishing expectation value of the spin ten field. So this result uh, implies that uh, the spin 10 vector spin, uh, SO10 vector spin defined by this um, partition function is in disorder phase. Okay. So this result is consistent with the claim that if we impose that the uh, spin field is uh, finite uh, norm in average, then the configuration space is S9, and uh, uh, homotopy group vanish, all the homotopy group vanish in four dimensions. Okay. Then, so no topological obstruction or singularity, and no massless excitation around topological singularity. So we can restore the symmetry in the symmetric gap phase. So uh, this is a rather simple computation, but uh, uh, I can argue with this result that the, the, all the right-handed field, all the field in the right-hand sector uh, are in disordered gap phase. Okay. Excuse me, can yes. I ask a question? So, yes. um, so for the fermion, you showed that the two-point correlation functions are short range. How, yes. how hard is it to compute something that is a different probe of the gap? For example, the polarization operator of the gauge field of the mirror. Is this possible to do? Yeah. It, uh, yes. Because indeed. you need to show that all correlation functions are short range. Two point function, it's not a Gaussian theory. So, um. uh, so you mean, uh, what do you mean by the, uh, what kind of correlation function are you? For, for example, oh. the polarization operator of the gauge field or, or ah, the yes. running of the gauge coupling, okay, the beta function, okay, something like that. Ah, yes, beta function. It is very complicated because the, uh, because the con contribution from this, uh, yes, yes. So you mean the uh, two point function of this case? Of A, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, actually, it is very complicated, as you know, <laughs> as you know. Well, yes. Yeah, but... yeah this, mm -hmm. the F is, yes, this, uh, the, I think, uh, the, this is the contribution of the uh, Tofuto vertex part, okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And the uh, definition is this. And the two-point function is, means that the, we apply a one more variation with respect. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, this has a rather complicated uh, expressions. Okay. I, I have another question. Maybe it's not the time to ask, maybe it's towards the end, but what do you think is the prospect of a dynamical simulation of that theory? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, you know, of the full SO10 with, you know, suppose the mirror really decouples, right? You really want to know what the, what the SO10 theory with a 16 does. Yes. Yes. So what is the prospect of simulating that? Ah, uh, yes, uh, I, I, I'm going to mention about this. Okay, okay, uh, please. Because, yeah. because, uh, because the, we have a sign problem in general, so we must face first the problem, sign problem. Okay, I so see. it is a chiral gaze theory anyway. Yeah, yeah, so okay, yeah. Even in this definition, we have a complex action. I see, okay. okay. But uh, uh, let me, um, uh, yeah, but uh, in this, uh, in any way, uh, uh, okay. But, uh, excuse if, me. Yes? I have a naive question, a uh, previous slide. Just yes. want to make sure. Uh, this one. Uh, no, no, no. Or maybe later. Oh, this one, yes. So the 16 is the 16 dimensional representation of the, this uh, yeah. SO10 or spin 10. Yes. But you have a plus and minus, which is irreducible. And what's the what's the bar 
is a bar of a 16 minus bar related to 16 plus. Uh, uh, sorry, okay. uh, this is uh, bar, uh, star means the bar. Yes, bar. Uh, yeah, this anti-field. Okay. 16 dimensional left-handed uh, 16 dimensional wire fermions, anti-field, I mean. Okay, I see. Okay. No problem. In the okay. left hand sector, left hand sector, we only have a, this kind of uh, correlation functions. Okay. And uh, in the right hand sector, it, uh, field and anti field uh, separated completely because uh, we do not have a uh, kinetic term. Okay. So we mm -hmm. have a 16 plus and a 16 plus bar independent. Design. Can I make a so is 16 plus you choose to be a chiral matter and 16 minus is a mirror matter? Yeah, is plus that? means the mirror matter, sorry. Plus is mirror and minus and, uh, is normal. Yeah, minus yes, minus sorry. Okay. Yes. No problem. Not, not okay. related to the spin 10 representation. Okay, chirality, just to- I don't know, yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, and uh, another uh, 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 support uh, for the uh, claim that uh, all right-handed fields are in a disordered phase or a gapped phase. Uh, let me uh, discuss about uh, the uh, behavior of the Puffian eigenvalue distribution with respect to the limit uh, from positive region to the negative region, interpolation of the mass parameter to the plus positive region to the negative region. And uh, from the point of view of the topological insulator, and when their mass vanish goes to zero, uh, there should be a mass singularity because this is a phase boundary. But uh, uh, so uh, let me discuss uh, what happens if we let M0 goes to zero from both sides, plus zero and minus zero. Okay. And, uh, but I, okay. And uh, in this, so this is a, a expression, a formula for the chiral basis for the U field. Okay, right-handed basis for a left-handed basis. And uh, in the M0 goes to zero. In the limit, M0 goes to zero, okay? And uh, if M0 goes to zero from the positive side, I mean the uh, Wilson-Dirac operator has a negative mass, okay? So in the, in the topo in, from the point of view of topological initiator, it should be in uh, topological in non-trivial sectors. And in this case, we have a zero mode here. The, the non-vanishing component is um, positive one, upper, key, upper component. Okay, so this is the uh, basis vector for the uh, right-handed field. Okay, and uh, if we have a negative bare mass, which means that we have a positive mass for the wilson dirac operator, and uh, it is in the trivial sector, trivial phase from the point of view of political initiator. Then the uh, uh, I, uh, chiral basis vector for the chiral uh, right-handed mode is given by the same basis vector for the non-vanishing moment P, but for the zero mode, uh, component is flipped. So we have a non-vanishing uh, lower component, okay? So the difference is just in this zero mode. And the, since M0 is zero, uh, the eigenvector of this zero mode is vanishing, I mean zero. And uh, so right-handed basis and left-handed basis uh, has the same eigenvalue and degenerate, okay. And in this case, uh, we can interpret these two cases from positive side and negative side at the 
at on a uh, at when m node vanishes, and we can interpret the basis vector uh, with a uh, uh, parameter theta by rotating the components up and down components in this way. Okay, so uh, we can interpret the positive mass region to the negative mass region of the topological initiator. Okay, and then uh, I would like to see what happens, the Paffian integration. Okay, and uh, this is the result of the eigenvalue distribution for the uh, uh, Paffian uh, anti-symmetric matrix, okay, which for which I should evaluate the Paffians. Okay, and uh, this size is uh, from the uh, region where M0 is positive, which means the Wilson Dirac operator has a negative mass. Okay, in this case, we have a small uh, low lying eigenvalue, but we have a, a, a positive semi definite uh, Paffians from this uh, dif distribution of the eigenvalues. We can see that Paffian is positive semi definite in this case too. And uh, this right hand panel shows the eigenvalue distribution for the uh, matrix uh, where M0 goes to zero from the negative side, which means the uh, Wilson Dirac operator has a positive mass matrix. In this case, we do not have a low lying eigenvalues. Okay. And uh, in, from these, these two relations to these, uh, to these two results can be interpreted with the continuous parameter theta. Okay. And the uh, lower three panels show how the eigenvalue uh, moves. Okay. And uh, these low lying eigen, uh, okay. So this low lying eigenvalue goes to uh, go up or down and merge into the, uh, this uh, circle like arc like distributions. And uh, around this, uh, in the course of these interpolations, the distribution structure, eigenvalue distribution structure uh, does not change. I mean, there we can have a complex conjugate pair. So the Paffian remains positive semi-definite. And it means that Paffian integral non-vanishing. So we do not have any massless singularity at M node. So, and uh, this result is consistent uh, with this result. Here we have a massless limit, and but there is no uh, any singular behavior. And uh, in this um, uh, so positive mass parameter region and the negative mass parameter region are, con uh, are connected continuously. So this suggests that uh, in both phases are uh, actually in the disordered, the same disordered phases. And uh, this is consistent that this topological initiator actually has only single trivial phase. So this result also supports that the negative, uh, uh, this, uh, the spin 10 vector, the right handed sector, right handed mirror sector is in the disordered phase, even with the M0 positive, uh, even with M0 positive. Okay. So these, uh, analytic uh, or numerical result suggests that the right hand sector is indeed gapped and uh, in the paramagnetic uh, strong coupling phase, even in this limit.
And uh, uh, related to the Professor Poppit's uh, questions, we should compute uh, numerically the coefficient uh, vertex function in, in the expansion of the weak gauge coupling expansion. In the weak gauge coupling limit, we, can, we should compute vertex function in any way and check it should be analytic function or not. Okay, but uh, for the, uh, yeah, but, and uh, for the SO10 case, as I, as I argued, this Puffian, uh, if we have a trivial gauge link field, I argued that uh, this Puffian remains positive semi-definite. Then we can perform the this path integration numerically by the Monte Carlo simulations. Okay, so in any way, uh, as far as link field is trivial, I think it is possible to do Monte Carlo simulation to compute the vertex function as you did in the two-dimensional case. Okay, but uh, so far I did not have exp uh, explicit results. Okay, and as you know, uh, the IA checked this locality in the two-dimensional case. Okay, so. Uh, I, so if I have time, I can show you the result, but uh, let me skip this part. Okay, so uh, I do not have any result for the so then case for the computation of the vertex function to check the analyticity. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, okay, now let me discuss uh, so this is a story about uh, my proposal of the SO10 measure, okay? And uh, so let me uh, uh, discuss uh, relation to the other approaches proposals. And uh, for the Einstein Preskill model, at the original, I think original idea is realized with overlap fermions. And uh, this is nothing but uh, the Professor Poppies tried to do as explained in this uh, talk slide, okay. And uh, uh, as to the Miller fermion, Ginzburg Wilson fermion model proposed by Popitz and studied by uh, him, uh, in this work, we try to make the, uh, we make, uh, try to very define, uh, we, we defined the, uh, Myrna Yukawa coupling so that large coupling limit is very defined. Okay. And uh, I think as, um, the reason why the, in the needy case, um, uh, Professor Popis found uh, some non analytic contribution from the mirror sectors. But I think uh, it is because. Uh, the Myrna-Yuka coupling, large coupling limit of Myrna-Yuka coupling has some similarity, okay? And uh, I, I fix, I try to fix this problem and I proposed uh, certain two-dimensional models. And uh, I checked uh, numerically that the such non-local behavior uh, we do not observe any non-local behavior from the right-hand sec mirror sectors. Okay. So, uh, and uh, in our case, for the SO10 theories, sorry. Yeah, uh, it is, I think it is related to uh, choose the expression for the Tofut vertex operator. As I said, if you insert here P plus, but this is the usual way with the Ginzburg Wilson fermion, but for our purpose to decouple all right handed degrees of freedom, we should not do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. This uh, it can pro uh, it project out the some mode of the right handed field, and uh, it does not give a mass term. Uh, for such mode projected by this well, factor. Okay. So this is my claim. 
we should do in this way. Mm -hmm. And the uh, second, okay, so, and uh, as to the domain wall fermion model, uh, I put, uh, I constructed the boundary coupling so that that coupling also has a very defined limit. Okay. And, uh, and uh, as a low energy effective series, we have a mirror fermion model with a mild naive coupling, which has a very defined large coupling limit. So we, uh, we try to formulate uh, such boundary couplings. Okay. And uh, if you use the uh, usual boundary field, okay. if you use the uh, usual boundary field as proposed by Shamia, it is similar. So we should not use that variable. Okay. So this is a little. And as to the four-dimensional topological initiator approach, uh, we uh, formulated uh, this topological initiator model in terms of five-dimensional Euclidean lattice uh, formulation and derived a uh, lattice model for the gapped boundary. So I formulated uh, gapped boundary series constructed explicitly as three plus one D lattice model with overlap fermions. And I argued that boundary phase is actually gapped, okay, as I discussed. So uh, I can show you an uh, explicit uh, uh, boundary interaction term for the uh, for dim five dimensional domain wall fermion or Euclidean formulation of Yon 4D topological insulator as follows. So first, first line it gives the uh, usual domain ball fermion action. And the, these three lines uh, define the uh, boundary interaction terms. Here I use, uh, so you, you can see that uh, tip, usually we use this field Q or Q bar, which, is, which consists of the boundary variables. Field variable sit on the boundary, okay? But um, this, um, this uh, if you choose these variables to uh, formulate a boundary interaction, it gives rise to the mirror fermion model with a singular uh, large coupling limit. So, I try to formulate another other way, which has a, a good property in the large coupling limit of y bar. Okay. And uh, from this definition of the five-dimensional domain wall fermion, and uh, we can take the low energy limit uh, to derive the mirror fermion model with overlap fermions. Or well, we can uh, also uh, consider the saturation limit of the mirror edge mode in the five-dimensional approach, uh, formulation directly. Okay. And uh, then um, by this choice of the boundary interaction terms, if we consider the low energy limit, we end up with the mirror fermion model with this coupling constant, mm -hmm. not this one. Right. Okay. Okay. And then we can take the uh, uh, saturation limit of the mirror overlap fermions, mirror overlap wire fermions. So it is defined, the, it is defined, it, the limit is defined by uh, the spin 10 vector field, spin SO10 vector spin field has a uh, uh, constant norm as proposed by, as argued by the Professor Ben. Okay? And that this is nothing but the action which I uh, discussed. Okay? So this part is this Yukawa coupling with a spin. Uh, SO10 vector spin field with, uh, with uh, norm unity. 
and uh, this is nothing but I proposed. Okay. This action is effective action, including the auxiliary field. Okay. And uh, as I argued, this model is in the gapped phase, all the right-handed field, all the field in the right-handed sector, since uh, assumed uh, gapped, as I argued. So this model defines, and that this defines uh, from the point of view of the topological insulator, this model defines a uh, lattice model uh, of the gapped boundary phase. Okay. And uh, the Euclidean formulation of this topological insulator can be written. The partition function of the topological insulator uh, can be defined with this uh, five dimensional action of the domain wall fermion. And then uh, using the relation between the domain wall fermion and the uh, uh, overlap fermions, we can show directly that it is factorized. The low energy part can be factorized like this. And that this part is defined and uh, in the limit of the saturation limit where uh, a partition function turns out to be equal to the uh, antiperiodic uh, partition function defined with the antiperiodic boundary condition times the uh, chiral determinant and, and, and uh, pass integration of the Paphian. Okay, in this way. And so uh, this part is actually gives the partition function of the boundary phase, okay? Oh, boundary gap to phase. And that uh, this is the uh, boundary uh, massless phase, okay? Gapless phase. And that uh, this is the left-handed part and that uh, this is the right-handed part. And in this way, uh, we can uh, formulate the topological insulator model in terms of the Euclidean uh, five-dimensional uh, theory. And we can show actually that the gap to phase, boundary phase contribution is expressed in this way. Okay, so uh, uh, I think um, the Paphian integration means uh, I think uh, this uh, in and uh, as I said, uh, this expression holds true in all topological sectors, and uh, I think um, this is a, a kind of way to express the uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Uh, I, 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 find, I, I found that the, the Paphian appears in this way. Uh, I think it is interesting that the Paphian uh, of this kind can represent the partition function of the uh, gap to the boundary phase. Uh, I do not know uh, it is related to the uh, 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 mm, uh, 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 I expect some uh, relation to formulate the gap boundary phase or uh, topological quantum field theory. Uh, and uh, this kind of uh, expression with Paphia may be useful in relation to topological quantum field theory, but I do not know detail. Okay, so let me summarize my talk. Okay, so in, uh, I try to formulate the manifestly gauge invariant path integral measure uh, for the SO uh, Ginzburg Wilson or overlap by the fermion in 16 dimensional 
spinal representation in SO10 chiral gauge theory by using full Dirac fermion measure, but saturating the right handed part of it with two foot vertices completely. And uh, it seems that it apply all possible top sky sectors. Okay. And the left hand sector, zero mode, to foot vertex, and fermion number conservation is reproduced. And the effective action is CP invariant. And the locality and the smoothness issue remaining. But it is testable. And to see if it works, we should examine the correlation function of this right hand sector. The Monte Carlo study in weak gauge coupling limit feasible with that sign program. And, uh, but uh, it costs uh, numerically, numerical cost is rather large because we are working with four dimensional lattice theory with you know, whole one generation coke and leptons. Okay, so it is rather uh, tough numerical computation, I think. So, okay, analytic study would be also desired. Okay, and uh, making the two foot vertex term very defined in the large coupling limit, I established the relation to the Ginzburg Wilson fermion model, domain wall fermion model with boundary Einstein Peskill terms, and for D, topological insulator, topological superconductor with gapped boundary phase, explicit. Okay, okay thank you. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. So if you, uh, so I already use the, uh, almost four hours, I think, <laughs> three hours. So no. sorry for no. Thank you. No, no, no. long talk. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yoshio Shikukama, for the uh, great lecture. Uh, oh, thank you very much for your attention. Questions from audience. Questions from audience. Uh, let me say that uh, uh, Professor Kikukawa Yoshio Kyogyu, Kyogyu, Kara Kono, Samina, O Itataki, Taihen Koei ni Omaimasu, Kikukawa. Can I just ask one question? Yes. Please. Yeah, Please. I don't want to take too much time, but so you, you, you already focused on this one particular theory. I know it's an awesome extension of the standard model. But, yes. uh, you know, people tend to study all kinds of chiral gauge theories, you know? Yes. Do you think there is any kind of lessons for the ability to formulate general chiral gauge theories, which appear consistent in the continuum? You know, yes. people yes. argue they have no, no, no anomalies, no global anomalies, no this, no that. Yes. Do you think there is a lesson? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, once you have a proof that there is no global anomaly, then, it should be possible to design a lattice action and to describe such chiral gauge theory. And that it would be easy if you use the overlap fermions as you did first. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I believe that the, the proof of the absence of global anomaly is very important. Right. As Ruben and Professor Ben and did for SO10 case. Yeah. At, uh, yeah. And uh, I think, yeah, actually, see, uh, here I discussed about the mirror Fermi approach, as you considered. And, uh, but as I said, there is an original approach by Lucia, right? Sorry, just I go back to. So we should try to construct the major, yes, the construction approach uh, proposed by Lucia. And for right. no abelian theories, we do not have an answer. And uh, 
the problem is about the problem is to solve a local cohomology problem for the lattice gauge anomaly. Okay, this is rather hard part, but if we can do this, since if we have a, a um, I, I think if you have a continuum proof that there is no global anomaly using the cobordism discussions. And then uh, once we can solve the local cohomology problem, uh, it, is straight, it is now straightforward to define the uh, chiral basis uh, consistent manner. Yes, I, I think so. Uh, it is, so in this case, in this Lusha's approach, we do not need to formulate the boundary interaction terms. Okay, so just construct the major term uh, by solving the local cohomology problem. Okay. And uh, once we have, and uh, after that, we need to prove that the global integrability and that this problem is same as to prove there is no global anomaly. And for this part, we can use the decent result about in the continuum result, uh, result in the continuum theory uh, to prove the, uh, uh, to uh, uh, classify the uh, possible global anomalies. So I now trying to do this. So I want to try to prove the existence of the measure uh, using the continuum result. Okay. So uh, Lucia's approach, we do not need to design the boundary interaction terms and we do not need to try to uh, examine the phase structure or disordered nature of a certain dynamical systems. So uh, I think it is better to do for more generic chiral cases. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed your talk. Thank you. Yeah. A question. Yeah. Um, make sure. So from my perspective, it looks the design of the interactions for the mirror sectors yes. um, may be important and there will be a lot more structures inside of design of interactions. Yes. Uh, I wasn't fully sure what I get the main point of your construction. Is there something like a design of interactions, subtlety in your construction or there's no such things? Uh, what do you mean by subtlety? Uh, what, what I mean is the following is that uh, uh, how, how do you design interactions? What, what are the mural sectors? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, at, yeah. At, at, uh, other than say it's gapped, but how is it gapped? And yeah. what, are the, how, how, what are the properties? Yes. And uh, the condition for, uh, necessary condition for, uh, necessary condition is, uh, comes from the uh, consideration on the Tofuta anomaly in the old sense, <laughs> in the old sense. And uh, you. you have a global symmetry in the target continuum theory, then uh, this, uh, it is very, uh, Fitch has a Tofuta anomaly, then uh, it is hard. Uh, in the mirror sector, you must break such a global symmetry. Okay, if you start from the Dirac fermions, left hand, if left-handed field have a global, no, a global symmetry, then the same symmetry, uh, uh, right-handed sector should have a same symmetry. But if you assume that global symmetry has a Tofuta anomaly with the gauge interaction, okay, uh, with gauge interaction or some, okay, so, we are talking about a global symmetry, but if you try to gauge it, then it has a mixed gauge anomaly with the uh, original gauge interaction, okay? And in this case, uh, uh, that this is a feature of the continuum theory. So 
we should keep this property in the left-handed sector. But if you try to uh, gap the right-handed sector, that symmetry uh, implies that there must be some infrared uh, degrees of freedom which can saturate the such tofut anomalies. So you, so you cannot make all degrees of freedom gapped. As far as we have a such global symmetry, exact on the lattice in the right hand sector, our mirror sectors. So you must kill such a global symmetry in the mirror sector. So that okay, can, yeah. let, let's go. Is there some slide maybe capture this essence? Maybe, you know, in, in a general sense, physicists yes. may want to have some equation as simple as possible. Is there some equation that you may show from your slide that capture this essence? Maybe I, I can see from there. Yes. It's, it's something I want to take probably from the, oh. the essence ingredients from your talk. Is there some kind of a form or maybe your partition functions? There are some kind of things uh, I'm trying to say slightly beyond the anomaly check. I understood yeah. this uh, yeah. global anomaly for spin 10 or SO10 oh, kind of formal theory. I there is, I think there's additional, one more ingredient somewhere. I was wondering, say, do you, do you also feel that other than checking global anomaly, actually to consider this mirror gap sector, there's additional, additional, additional inputs one need to, uh, one need to come in. Is there yeah. something like that in your context? I don't know. You don't know? I, no, no. Be, beyond, beyond this the global anomaly no, and the, no, the, no, there's no, a anomaly, no, yeah. Right. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Ah, yes. Mm. I, I think, uh, I think but, my but, understanding but, is that uh, uh, with yeah, the whole but, uh, what, what I found it very interesting is the dynamics of the SO10 vector spin field. Uh, defined by this uh, Paphian integral, okay? And uh, this is very strange. Uh, yeah, it is very, yeah. I think this, 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 part, this partition function, yeah, this, this integral can be defined. This, we can, we can regard this path integral defines uh, a kind of a certain vector spin field. And uh, 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 this uh, behavior of this spin field very peculiar because in four dimensions, uh, I, I guess, uh, mm, sorry, uh, mm, uh, mm, the behavior, uh, so dynamical property of this SO10 vector spin field given by this partition function is very important to realize the gapped phase. And uh, uh, this is a kind of nonlinear sigma model in four dimensions with asymptotically free, asymptotic free coupling constant. So this means that the usual uh, kinetic term, P2 term, P2, P square term, does not contribute. And it starts from the P to fourth term. Okay, then we can uh, have a non, uh, this, uh, such uh, nonlinear sigma model has uh, asymptotically free behavior, okay? So uh, this kind of dynamics of spin field is very uh, convenient to have uh, gap the phase uh, for the mirror fermions in four dimensions. In two dimensions, it is easy to such a field, but in four dimensions, this kind of field, it is, uh, it, uh, it, 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 it seems difficult to formulate such field, for formulate such spin field model. And uh, I, I, I suspect, I, I expect that uh, this definition of a certain vector spin field 
model and provide such example. Okay, so uh, so this is, uh, but uh, this is my opinion for um, so uh, some other aspect. If you ask other dynamical aspect to yes, dynamical. interaction for this mirror sector, uh, this kind of spin field dynamics could be important. Mm -hmm. So these are, the, these are like a, the Yukawa Higgs field. Yes. In terms of the ones. Yeah, but oh, like, this is not the usual one. Yeah. This should behave similar to the two dimensional nonlinear sigma model, but in four dimensions. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. This E of EA is a SO10 vector. Yes. Which is uh, uh, like a Higgs term. You call yes. it Higgs term. Right. Yeah, yeah, yes. Originally, yeah, this is it's the, been, it has uh, Yukawa coupling to the bilinear. Spin, spin, spin zero, right? Spin yeah. zero is the other thing. Yeah. Spin zero, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think uh, one thing I find is that uh, they seem to be some, maybe, maybe hidden mathematical structure about certain competitions when you try to design interactions. That's basically one thing I can say. Mm -hmm. There is uh, some kind of a sequel there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think uh, that's, that's the deepest part. I feel that the, some hidden sequel inside the, there's, there's some competitions. It's kind of uh, subtle to design such things. Well, mm -hmm. well uh, there's, a, there's, a scale, there's a vector feel, or maybe the Yukawa Higgs, maybe some random uh, disorder approach. Uh, I find that I, I, I cannot see directly the, the subtlety of design from this approach. And these are also when used similar approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. there could be a better way to do this. Maybe the mm -hmm. mathematical structure might show up. That's, mm -hmm. that's all. I see. But I see. it's not clear at this moment. But I think they have something but it's very interesting. Yes. Uh, any question from the audience in, in case more questions? Thank you very much. And thank you, er, uh, Eric, Professor Eric Popis for the nice comment. Yeah, thank you very much for asking. Yes. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, I, I have one question to the Professor Popitz. And uh, do you believe my numerical results about the two dimensional uh, Abelian chiral gauge models? I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. I, yeah. I looked at them three years ago, but at that time, yes. Uh, it, yeah, okay. it, and I must say also the analytical showing the singularity of the limit we took, that was really, really impressive, okay? I was very impressed by that. Uh, ah, yes, absolutely, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, here, yeah, here yeah. I have a slide for the numerical result, but uh, I'm sorry, but I didn't have that. No, it's okay, yes, absolutely, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so thank thank you very much. Uh, I, I I don't know how much how many like other people I must uh, want to say, but uh, really <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, really sorry. Yeah, Kigokawa Sensei, Ni Kanshai Shimasu. Is that correct to say this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very sorry for taking long time. No, no, I'm very sorry that uh, you need to talk till like almost three or something. <laughs> yeah, you should have a, yeah, okay, have a good night. So that's yeah. gonna be, bye-bye. Yeah, thank you very much, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, yes.